five straight bowl games for Wake Forest and a 3-0 start. Wake Forest is rolling, but they want more. And with 20 out of 22 starters back from a season ago, they want to go from good to great. I spoke to seventh-year defensive lineman Miles Fox, and he told me every off-season workout, every practice rep they have in mind, the past just wasn't good enough. And with nine super seniors, the leadership and understanding of schemes is the best he has seen. The goal of seven win seasons are gone. They want 10 wins in an ACC championship. Head coach Dave Clawson knows this team has something bigger in mind. Clark, great stuff. Certainly a win tonight on the road would go a long way towards that goal. Wake Forest getting the football first. And Andre Ware, we talked so much about Mr. Armstrong in the open. How about Sam Hartman? Yeah, he's a pretty good one as well. A guy that you know, has went to work on the mental aspect to really get himself entrenched in this offense. Know all the, the curveballs that are coming at him from defenses. He's playing some solid football. And we'll go to the ground on first down. That'll be the ACC's leading return rusher, Christian Beale Smith. He'll gobble up five. Christian Beal Smith, all ACC selection a year ago. Remember, they lost Kenneth Walker, the other tailback. He transferred to Michigan State. On second and five, Beal Smith probes the left side, stacked up about a yard shy. It'll be Nick Jackson, the buck linebacker for Virginia, on the tackle, setting up a third and short. And this is where Wake wants to live. They'll go fast. Once they have some success, you're going to see them right on the ball. Ball snapped quickly, living in third and, third and short. Keep it on the ground. A steady dose of Beal Smith straight ahead. Gets a good push from that offensive line and picks up five more in a first down. Nice job up front. Zach Tom, their best offensive lineman. He's playing the best up front. Extremely talented. Coaching staff thinks that he has a chance to play on the next level. Hartman ready to toss his first pass. Plenty of time. Now flushed out to the left and throws complete. A.T. Perry, and they will say incomplete, intended for Perry, who was a primary target of Hartman's last week in the win against FSU. There you look at Dave Clawson in his eighth year. What a remarkable job he has done. Five consecutive bowl games, three of those victories. A guy who paid his dues at a number of spots before he got the head coaching job in Winston-Salem. Tipped up in the air, and that is caught by a lineman. And down at the 44, that is Nagasam Naya, the right guard. It was tipped by Anthony Johnson. Yeah, right place, right time. And a great coverage by Johnson on the back end, getting his left hand in there. But still a gain, and going to get Wake Forest to third down and medium. Crowd ignites on third and five. Pass is caught. Perfect throw right to A.T. Perry, who is closely covered by Johnson. What I mean, blanketed. Perfect coverage, and the ball placement by Hartman's just perfect. 68% for Sam Hartman on the season, and that's why. Throws like that last one. Threads the needle on that one, and then is on target again. Complete at the 40. That's Jaquari Roberson. As good as Hartman has been, you got to be impressed with this group of receivers this year. Yeah, across the board, A.T. Perry, we saw him the previous play. And then Jaquari Ro Roberson on the other side. Complement one another extremely well. Second in the yard. Again, they go up tempo. You won't see a ton of huddling for Wake Forest. Beal Smith straight ahead. He'll pick up a first down yard. Devontae Cross on the stop for UVA. What is it about, Andre, this Wake Forest offense that causes people so many problems? Well, it's the pace. It's the patience within the pace to get a personnel grouping on the field and keep them there. Hartman all kinds of time looking deep. Wide open target. Caught at the goal line. And a touchdown for Taylor. And a score, an impressive opening drive for the Demon Deacons. You get so concerned about A.T. Perry and Jaquari Robertson, you forget about Taylor Morin, the smaller guy in that, that trio, but they run coverage off. There's two deep routes, and then all of a sudden he's leaking out across the field. They forget all about him, and he's wide open. He could have punted that one to him. <laughs> Warren, one of 11 players on this Wake roster from the state of Virginia. So you know that's extra special for him. 
and an extra special opening drive for Wake Forest. An impressive slate of games coming up tomorrow. Texas Tech, Texas, LSU, Mississippi State of the key SEC battle. How about Clemson at NC State? Can the Wolfpack pull off an upset against Clemson's offense, which has been struggling thus far in the early part of the season? They're stuck in first gear. Impressive opening drive for the Demon Deacons. It'll be Hollins from the goal line, breaking tackles, streaking down the far side. And takes it out to the 27 yard line and that'll give us our first chance to see Brennan Armstrong and you couldn't have played a better opening three games than Brennan Armstrong has first in virtually every meaningful category in the ACC and again number one in the country with those 433 passing yards per game a young man who is a safety coming out of high school and a guy that really has peaked at the right time for Bronco Mendenhall in this Virginia offense. They go to the ground on first down and battering his way to the 35 yard line is Mike Hollins, the sophomore out of Baton Rouge. Yeah, he played a bunch as a true freshman, very elusive running back and almost kind of surprising to see him take that approach. A little nasty to start the game for Hollins. He's so elusive, so quick that he doesn't take on a lot of defenders, but he did there on the first play. Darrington, the motion man, and a flag pre snap. Ball start. Offense. Number 55. Five yard penalty. Second down. Yeah, that's where offensive coordinator Robert and I wants to stay out of. You know, you've got to got to make sure that you are not in long yarded situations. You were talking about Brendan Armstrong. Yeah, he kind of plays the position that way. And, yeah. and, you know, at least last year, he's not afraid of linebackers and defensive backs, almost looks up to contact. At times. You're talking about a guy who wants to participate in UFC one yeah. day, so he's not going to be afraid of a hit by a middle linebacker. The lefty triggers one out of the flat complete. And banging his way into the 40 yard line is Mike Hollins. Who plays well beyond his years. And Bronco Mendenhall now in his sixth year. Remember when he took over this program, Virginia yeah. was two and ten. They had hit a low point. Four years later, they win the Coastal and they're playing in the Orange Bowl. Wanted a challenge that hey, I wanted a place to go where they weren't winning and there was something else that they were committed to other than just football. Armstrong Cox and fires deep down the sideline. Having a step was Dontavian Wicks, who has become his top target. He had a step on Gavin Holmes, but the ball a little bit too far. Yeah, Holmes listed as a true freshman because of the COVID year, but played last year, had an interception against North Carolina. But he was he was beaten on that play by Wicks. On second down, Armstrong. Going to tuck it and run, picking his way through blockers. And out to the 47 yard line. Kobe Davis oh, on the tackle good. after a gain of seven yards. Well, he takes care of the football. Only two interceptions this year. And you saw the first play with a check down, or his first pass with a check down. Not going to force it into coverage. Takes care of the ball. And then when everything is, you know, seems to break down, no one's open, he can do that to get himself or his football team back in a short yardage situation here on third and three. Ronnie Walker, the lone back on third and short. Armstrong with time. Cox and fires complete. Threads the needle right to Don Tavian Wicks for a first down. That's the 71% completion percentage you see. I mean, when you're watching film, right out in front. Otherwise, Taylor's going to make a play, but the ball is placed so well to Wicks that it doesn't allow for Taylor to make a play on it. Wicks had a 40 yard touchdown reception and a go route last week against FSU. First down in Wake Forest territory. Breaking tackles. Penalty flags on the play. Yeah, those, are, those are holding flags flying in. It certainly looked like it as Hollins picked up five, but this one likely going Personal back. Foul. Face mask. Oh. Foul. Number one. Wow. 15 yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. First down. That is on Camara, the defensive tackle. Fifth year senior out of Richmond, Virginia. Usually don't see a guy 290 pounds wearing number one, but you see it. I mean, every official saw it. Is reaching out, grabbing, and it's it's obvious. He's in the game because Miles Fox 
unavailable tonight. This is the eighth play of the drive after a Wake Forest nine play touchdown drive of their own. Rodriguez in the game, the utility man will give it off to Armstrong and Armstrong is lassoed down for a big time loss. That is the outside linebacker Luke Masterson. The captain moved over from Rover where he played in 2019, the linebacker this year and split some time at Rover, but that's a heck of a tackle on a strong quarterback. I was watching Armstrong warm up. It makes the, the, the tackle even more impressive. He kind of looks like a rugby player yeah, he does. From, uh, from the waist <laughs> down. Big lower body. You'll see a lot of that chicanery out of the Virginia offense. Four different players have already thrown a pass this year. Armstrong looking to throw one here. Buying time. Deep downfield. Diving catch. Touchdown. Grant Miss, the tight end for 28 yards. Once again, it's the ball placement by Armstrong. Does he hold on? Does Miss hold on to this? No. Might have to bring in our rules expert, Matt Austin, to see if he believes this is a catch. I'm not sure. Yeah, Andre, taking a look at it, I don't think this is a catch. There was too much of the ball hitting the ground. If he secures possession, then the ball touches, it's a catch. But I think he's barely got fingertips on it. Yeah. I think the ground definitely helped him catch this ball. I, I think this will be overturned. I totally agree with you there, Matt. Our replay official is Bob Welch, and he will likely make a change on this one. We are averaging this year 2.1 replay stops a ball game. That's down from 2.5. We've got an average of one overturned. Oh boy, was replay. that was that a well thrown ball? Oh, great. It's, it's a great it's effort either, on both parts. Either either Mitch is going to catch it, or it's not going to be, you know, either tipped or intercepted. Anything. It's going to be my guy's going to catch it, or nobody's catching it, and he put it right out there for him. And it looked like there was really nothing developing on that play at all, and then all of a sudden he just fired one downfield right on target. I am I am in full agreement with Matt Austin though that I don't think it's a catch. Never really had control, yeah. fingertips, and then goes to the ground. I think they're going to overturn this one, bring it back. Should mention average time per replay, which is always a sensitive subject, about 90 seconds. Total stop time, a little over two minutes, and I would think this one would not take very long. After further review, it's an incomplete pass. Third down. Man's batting a thousand. <laughs> Needless to say, the Scott Stadium faithful not happy with the call, but that's, certainly looked like the right one. Yeah, that's why it's so nice to have Matt with us every Friday night. There's a heck of a job. Well, the more controversy we have, the more airtime Matt Austin gets. <laughs> no so. doubt. There's pressure, pressure in sitting in his seat. <laughs> Now, what a difference that call will make. Where are they going with the football? Got an official going all the way back almost to midfield, and it's going to be about the 28 yard line or so is where it should be spotted. Yep. Finally got that right. And now, long yardage third down situation here for Brennan Armstrong. Third down and 19. They've been magical, though. 48% on third downs for the season. Yeah, so far, their offensive numbers have been video game like. Three man rush on third down and 19. Armstrong taps, fires, and again right on target. My goodness. The accuracy is just staggering. Yeah, you can see him go through the progressions. See if he gets a foot down and bounds. Looks to be good. You can even see a little green in between. 20 yards of first down. Andre, you and I have seen this kid on television like yeah. some people have. In person, it's even more impressive. Well, when you start watching the film on him, it's impressive there as well. But to watch him go through his progressions, throw the ball accurately, and then maintain his poise, it's, it's next level stuff. First and goal. Armstrong going to keep it himself. Little pitch play and in and out of the hands of Mike Hollins. That's a dangerous play. Luckily for Hollins, it goes out of bounds. I thought for sure Armstrong was going to keep this one. 
And really, you're running out of pitch room, and the pitch relationship has really broken itself down, which is why Hollins couldn't handle it. Go ahead and keep that one and eat it, and he likes to challenge defenders. There's a golden opportunity that had passed him by. What a drive this has been for the Cavaliers, the 11th play of the drive, well, second down and goal. Yep, man to man up top. And that time overshoots Billy Kemp, who has also been highly active so far on the year. Already 18 catches and three touchdowns for that young man, who they list at 5'9". That might be a little bit generous, but he is a weapon. He really is. They'll run him on speed sweeps. Caught a pass in every game, all 10 games last year, and averaged about six receptions per game last season. So they like putting the ball in his hands. What are you looking for here on third down? Well, it looks like almost a quarterback run where the way they're, everything's set up, almost a 4-1 front. You can run quarterback draw here. Armstrong. Pressure up the middle, and that time a little too much hot sauce, but a penalty flag on the play. Wicks was the intended target. And it might have been some contact in the Wake Forest secondary. Defense, number six, half the distance to the goal, automatic, first down. That's their best cover guy, Jasir yeah. Taylor. And they're going right at him. I mean, it's, he's so confident with his arm that it doesn't matter what the scouting report says or how good a guy is in coverage. You see just the tug on the back of the jersey. Not a whole lot, but just enough to draw the flag. An eye on uh, Jelani Woods down here as well. The big six-seven tight end. We're in number zero. Timeout on the field. 7:42 to go. Make it 7:41. First quarter. Now five straight bowl games for Wake Forest. Three of them victories. That's not the only impressive streak for that man and his Demon Deacons. They have defeated Virginia four consecutive times, dating back to 08. That's the first time in the history of this rivalry that that has happened. Virginia. Trying to respond. First down and goal. Armstrong going to keep it, and he'll be wrapped up and bottled up right near the line of scrimmage, maybe even a loss. Ja'Cory Johns, the 6'4", 260-pound defensive end, rocked him for a and loss of one. Going to test the run first with Armstrong, and then come back, and they'll throw here. And as I mentioned, keep an eye on the big fella, 6'7", 265 pounds. Good looking athlete right there at number zero. And he's at the bottom of your screen. On second down to the ground game. And pushing the pile for about a yard is Hollins. Kobe Davis, number 20 in white on this tackle for the Demon Deacons. So, so far a good stand for this Wake Forest defense that is ranked top 25 nationally. They return nine starters. They have all kinds of depth. Might be the best defense that Coach Clawson has enjoyed in Winston-Salem. He wouldn't tell you that, but we certainly can say yeah, it. Yeah, we'll say it for him, right? <laughs> I mean, the nine starters, a lot of continuity on that side of the ball. Guys know where to be. They trust one another, and you're starting to see it. We mentioned it in the open at the top with the plus five in turnover margins, or in mark turnover margin. They get the ball out. Once they get it out, they pounce on it. So after Wake Forest marches down the field on a nine-play, 75-yard drive, here comes Virginia. This drive already 13 plays, 67 yards. They had a touchdown called back. Looks like the proper call on replay. And here we are looking at a third and goal. What are you dialing up here, Andre? This is where you've got to be aware of uh, – of Armstrong, a, a mobile quarterback that can can make some plays and when everything breaks down. They're going to try to throw the football here, but you have to have someone, Masterson or Smenda, those two linebackers with an eye on the quarterback when he pulls it down. Woods has seven inches on Kalen Carson. Instead, he looks the opposite way, and it's incomplete. That was intended for Woods in the flat. And the drive stalls on third and goal. We'll see if Virginia has any notion of going for it. Well, that's a, you know, it's one of those mismatches when you when you have Kobe Davis at 5'11 trying to check the 6'7 Jelani Woods. You get down here, you've got to try to take advantage of a big target like Woods. They're going for it. Do you like the call? I, I like the call. You're going to know they're going to have to score some points tonight. Wake is 
can put points on the board in a hurry. On pace to set a school record for a season in that category. Play number 15 of the drive. Armstrong looks right now over the middle into double coverage and almost picked off. Either way, it'll be Wake Forest football as the defense tightens up inside the 10 yard line and pulls off the stop. Virginia comes up empty. Wake Forest back with the ball when we come back. Scott Stadium in Charlottesville. Don't be surprised if they don't throw it here. Hartman. Finds that mesh point nice. and gives it off to Beal Smith, breaking tackles. First down yardage for Christian Beal Smith, the junior out of Winston Salem, a pickup of 13. And I say that because you got an experienced quarterback at Sam Hartman. He's not going to hold on to the ball long. And you got these outstanding receivers on the edges and Perry and Roberson. Beal Smith averaging nearly six yards a carry, and he'll gobble up a few more here. You know, I've been calling games with Sam Hartman since his freshman year when he was 175 pounds. Now he's 210. He's developed physically. More importantly, mentally. He used to get really frustrated when he made a mistake. Now he's learned how to breathe. He's learned how to let it go. John Wolford, a former quarterback at Wake Forest, has been instrumental in terms of his mental therapy. Clark, great stuff, and he has been. He had a, a, a really rough bowl game, which he talked about. He went a streak before the bowl game and before the Virginia Tech game. 258 consecutive passes without a pick. That's the fifth longest streak in ACC history. He does not make many miscues. On third and two, Hartman, clean pocket. High throw, but reeled in by the six foot one Jaquari Roberson. Well, you got six one on one side and six five on the other. But to go back to your point on Hartman, he, he's a guy that watches a ton of film. So he is extremely prepared when he comes into a game. And then he brings other guys with him to help him te help to teach them what he's seen. Beal Smith again grinding between the tackles for three more yards. This Virginia defense got absolutely annihilated against North Carolina last week. They gave up 699 yards. They currently rank 92nd in the country in total D. You look at the talent, you feel like they're better than that. They just haven't shown it as of yet. I'll tell you who has shown it, Sam Hartman again on target. That is A.T. Perry, a 6'5 sophomore out of Lake Worth, Florida, who somehow fell through the cracks. Warren Ruggiero, the offensive coordinator, is basically throwing haymakers, jabs, uh, body shots. It, it, it's all over the place right now for this Wake Forest offense. And it, it's keeping Virginia off balance. Offside. Defense, number 13, five yard penalty, first down. That's on the Mike linebacker, Hunter Stewart. And I, I think it's an outstanding job of call play calling right now being done by this Wake Forest offense. Well, how many times do you see an offense return all 11 starts? Yeah, that's, you don't see it, not in today's world, because somebody's upset. Right. They didn't get the ball enough, and they're going to transfer out. In the era of the transfer portal to have all 11 guys back on first and five, hit as he throws, and that will lollipop its way out of bounds. Well, fortunate for Hartman there that it did. He was in his throwing motion and it just kind of propelled the ball to uh, to the out of bounds area. Looked Luckily, like. he didn't follow through and hit your and you catch your finger or your thumb on a helmet. And it's Carter, Jameer Carter, and Brown on the hit, wide open over the middle. Whiteheart, the tight end, all the way down to the 26 yard line. That's only his second catch of the year. Whiteheart, his second catch, as you mentioned. Chapman, the other tight end, only two catches on the year, but you know they do the dirty work. They protect. Another impressive drive. That is play number nine. That one goes nowhere for Beal Smith. No gain on the play, but here is Wake Forest again, just marching methodically downfield. Yeah, this drive started at their five-yard line after a, a nice, I would say, I wouldn't say goal line stand, but a, a, a stand nonetheless inside the five, and here they come. 
Hartman on second down. Again, a steady dose of number one, Christian Beal Smith on the carry. Modest game sets up a third and long. Well, you know, to your point about all 11 starters coming back, you see so much individualism in college right. football today. If I, if I mentioned it, if you don't play enough or I didn't get enough passes, mm -hmm. I'm going to transfer to this school. <laughs> this is what can happen when a group of guys decide to stay together and, and, and reach, you know, try to reach a goal. Hartman out of the pocket. Checks off a couple of reads, then throws, but it's incomplete. Boy, it looked like it was right on target for Roberson, but he cannot hang on, at least not in bounds. And they got one of the best kickers in the country trotting himself on the field. Oh, boy, did you ever <laughs> say a mouthful there? Because Nick Skiba, there is good, and then there is really good. And we don't spend a ton of time bragging about kickers, but when you're the second all-time accuracy field goal kicker in the history of college football, You've earned some praise. 89.7% for Skiba. This will be from 46. Left, right, and through. 17 consecutive field goals. That's number one in the country. And Nick Skiba continues his record pace. On Saturday night, it's a great one brewing for you, brought to you by Capital One. Big 12 statement game in Norman, West Virginia. Heads into number four, Oklahoma, and Heisman hopeful Spencer Rattler. Looking for their first win in Norman since 1982, the Mountaineers are. It starts at 7.30 Eastern time on ABC and the ESPN app. Now Wake Forest off to a good start in this one. Two impressive drives. Yielding to two scores, one touchdown, one field goal. A 12-play, 67-yard drive led by that man, the talented sophomore Sam Hartman. And always seems to be in control, composed, poised. That's how I would describe Hartman. You can tell he knows this offense, forwards and backwards, where guys are going to be, where to go with the football, and does it in a timely manner. Again, Wake Forest has won four consecutive meetings between these two schools, an all-time streak for the Demon Deacons. And Virginia will have it first and ten from the 25 as we say hello to Clark. You know, Wayne Talapapa is the leading rusher for Virginia, and he is out. He has not cleared concussion protocol. They miss him, obviously, on the ground, but even more in pass protection. Robert and I, the offensive coordinator, said that Talapapa masters in pass pro and quarterbacks absolutely love him as a security blanket so that's a big loss for Virginia boy Clark you said it I yeah. mean, you're talking about a thousand yard rusher a captain and the best blocker out of the backfield for this offense there's a three down back where you can do all three phase, you know you execute all three phases of the position Armstrong tosses in the flat there's Billy Kemp Billy Kemp, who's been electric already this season, will tiptoe out of bounds after first down yardage and a gain of 13. Well, and he never broke stride. That ball was thrown right out in front, nice and soft. Sometimes you tend to, you know, drill that one, trying to be, you know, be a little perfect with it. And that was perfect from Armstrong. Kemp has now caught a pass in 19 consecutive games. He's the motion man at the top of your screen. And he will find himself with another reception. Billy Kemp, who made one of the best catches I've seen so far this year in the loss to North Carolina right near the end of the first half. Yeah. Over the shoulder in the end zone. Throw is perfect right in the bucket, but a great grab by Kemp. He's got terrific hands. And this is you know, shows you the, the smarts of this coaching staff. You know, they're not trying to force the run. They're going to try to throw to, you know, to run the football later on. How about Kemp again? Little end around. Kemp cut, turns it upfield, barging into Wake Forest territory, and another first down. That's a pass. You know, a lot of fans will say, "Oh yeah, they're running the football." No, I know all about that shovel pass. That's a that's yeah, a, that, that goes a pass. On the, that goes on the passing totals right there, baby. That's a stat stuffer <laughs> and an easy completion to go along with yeah. it. Yeah, you quarterbacks love those little plays. It's Pretty hard to incomplete that one, right? It's, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful play when it's blocked up just right. You got a guy that really knows how to tote the mail. Three wide on first down. Clean pocket for Armstrong. Missiles one complete at the 29 yard line. Big time play. And another first down. Dontavian Wicks. Excellent protection. 
by the offensive line and then Wicks who is just a magician at running routes bringing it back down the stem and away from coverage that's how you make sure that a guy is open you got Carson on in coverage he's a little bit high on top pulling back down with the throw just, just to make sure that there's no interference in there he's not going to get a paw on the football Wicks second in the ACC 346 receiving yards coming in 30 seconds remaining first quarter blitz coming Armstrong finds time and lasers another one complete at the 20 yard line that's Rayshon Henry and the tackle by Taylor after a gain of nine it went by accident that last week Armstrong threw for 554 yards and four touchdowns I mean you start to see exactly why this Virginia coaching staff is so excited about him as a player and you go back and you watch the film from last year it's a totally different right. quarterback totally different guy even Coach Clawson said last year he was just a good athlete. Yeah. Now he's a great quarterback. That was a great first quarter. Well, that is Robert and I from the state of Hawaii, former offensive lineman on that national championship BYU squad, led by, of course, Lavelle Edwards, leading the top passing offense in the country. Great conversation with Coach and I. Admits he doesn't even know where his national championship ring anymore is, but he yeah, says, I was shocked when he said that. I know Andre knows where his Heisman is. I know that. You're right. <laughs> Second down, a little throw underneath to Billy Kemp. But, you know, spoken like a true former offensive lineman, Robert and I told us everything starts with the protection. He it believes does. because we've had great protection by that offensive line, that has paved the way for the offense to be so explosive. 100% in agreement. You, you can have all the skill position players back. And if your stuff's not taken care of up front, the five guys up front, you can't function as an offense. And they're so important that uh, they make every single thing go. I believe they got a couple of pros on that offensive line. So it's going to be Billy Kemp again, and that one is strung out by Wake Forest. You guys are talking about Coach Robert and I. I asked him what's the number one trait for an offensive lineman. He said, love the game and how hard do you work to prepare to be great it's all about the details and he was simple in terms of his message to us guys right what ride receivers get open catch the ball work prepare be ready for excellence well, they have provided just that in the early part of this season this is not an easy off offense to conquer there's a lot of moving parts including 99 Keaton Thompson who's back in the game and he can do a little bit of everything he's their slash Armstrong looks one way now another now flushed out scrambling Armstrong showing off some speed and will tiptoe out of bounds near the six yard line. Yeah Masterson couldn't get to him. One of the better sideline to sideline players in the conference at linebacker and just could not couldn't close the gap on Brennan Armstrong. And but that's they've, they've been down here before right and couldn't cash in. Yeah they had a 15 play drive all the way to the five yard line and then could not convert on fourth down. Now you're looking at third down. Change the play here. Maybe get outside to one the one on one up top. Collins. Trying Ooh. to pave the way for Ooh. Armstrong and a good lift there by Nick Anderson. One man came in in an angry way, third team all ACC last year. And he came in and lowered the boom on the big fella. Of course, the field goal attempt here being down two scores. A little bit disappointing finish to both of these drives for Virginia. They marched down the field. They to convert on one fourth and goal, and now we'll set up for a chip shot field goal. This will be from 21 yards for Justin Dunkel. And the sophomore out of Great Falls, Virginia, hammers it home. 10 3 our score. Mike Morgan, Andre Ware, Paul Carcaterra from a raucous environment here at Scott Stadium where they've won 14 out of the last 15. 
at home. What do we like about this mesh point for Wake Forest? Well, they changed in about 20, between 2016, 2017 to, to really allow for the offensive linemen to get up on backs, develop the play slowly. Then the safeties, they get a little eye candy. They want to come up and help in run support. That frees up receivers to go right behind them. They're patient with it. They're deliberate with it. It's on purpose. It looks like they're playing in slow motion yeah. sometimes, but it trust me, it is part of their scheme, and they, they execute it at a very high level. Boy, do they ever. I think a lot of people would be surprised by some of their numbers. They'd be surprised by Beal Smith breaking free. A foot race down the near side and dragged down from behind at the 10-yard line. Anthony Johnson saved the touchdown after a 64-yard pickup. Just watch the mesh point right here. It's going to occupy the linebackers. They're going to bite up. They can't find the ball carrier because it's, it's developing so slowly. Allows the offensive line to get right in their face and spring a big, big run. Huge run by Ellison. They'll call it officially 63 yards. He'll get it again here. And will patiently push ahead. Looks like Le'Veon Bell, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. That running style. Just kind of patient, allowing the, the blocks to set themselves. And then all of a sudden, boom, here comes the running back through a hole. Beautiful to watch and see it develop. Virginia got gashed on the ground last week against North Carolina and Wake Forest trying to do it again. There's Nick Jackson on the stop. That'll be a loss on the play. I think a lot of people, Andre, would be surprised to know of all the talented offenses in this ACC. The only program other than Clemson to average over 30 points a game the last four years, yeah. the Demon Deacons. Wake. That's why they're you know, going bowling just about every year. Wake three of four on third down. Hartman flushed out. Defenders breathing down his neck. Hartman turns it upfield. And then will step out of bounds around the five yard line. He had Noah Taylor and Mandy Alonzo in hot pursuit. You don't have to run 4 4. Just got to run faster than the guys chasing you. And a late penalty flag. Holding defense oh boy. number one. Half the distance to the goal from the end of the run. That is a huge call. That's on Nick Grant, the safety. Yeah, you're going to see him working against Roberson. He's holding on, and that'll give him a fresh set of downs. Make it a goal to goal situation here. And so you got the stop, and then the penalty gives Wake Forest a great spot here. Inside the five. And now a timeout called uh, by Dave Clawson. Timeout. Wake Forest. Wake Forest up by set time. Coverage beginning with Monday night countdown at 6 o'clock Eastern. Just to clean things up on that last play. First off, the referee said on number one. It's on number 11, Josh Hayes. And the reason this is not an automatic first down it's yeah. because it's on a run. If he throws the football there, and automatic it, first. And it's an automatic first down. It was clearly explained to us by Matt Austin, a rules expert. And I thought it, as long as it was a hold during the pass play, right. it would be an automatic first down. It's not because he pulled it down that, and ran with it. That stumped everybody, including Dave Clawson, who was forced to call a timeout, set up a third down play as opposed to a first down. So third and one. Ellis in the deep back. They feed him between the tackles, lunging ahead. I don't know that he got there. He's going to be just short. Yeah, looks like they're marking it at about the two and a half. Maybe. Going fast. Now the marker says fourth down. The far side marker says fourth down, and it looks to be about a foot. Look at this, maybe measure this one. It's Nick Howell, defensive coordinator for Virginia. Been a long week for him in this Virginia defense that got thrashed pretty good last week. 
699 yards of offense allowed the, to the Tar Heels, trying to get his guys fired up on a fourth down and short. They're giving it up not only on the ground but through the air. And it's, it's about as balanced as you can get. 200 yards on the ground per game, 205 through the air. And so when, you're, when it's happening that way, you don't know how you're being hit. You don't know which to stop first. You got to stop something first. Ellison remains in the game at tailback. One of 11 Wake Forest Demon Deacons from the state of Virginia. When you go shotgun in these situations, it allows for penetration. And the back is to the side of the quarterback, so he doesn't now nah, like it. Hartman takes it himself. Good push, and it appears from here they've got it out to the one-yard line. Yeah, it drives me crazy when I see short yardage situations and the quarterback in the shotgun. Right. Because it allows for penetration. Then you got the back to the side of the quarterback. He doesn't get any downhill speed. He's got to wait on the football. These defensive linemen aren't waiting. Hartman, a fearless runner. Hands it off here. Plunging into the end zone. A touchdown for Justice Ellison, the freshman. Well, that's where it's so confusing when you play Wake because there's no hesitation. There's no mesh point to that one. That's just, hey, let's get a full head of steam and get in the end zone. How about the front five for Wake Forest? We talked about that Virginia offensive line. Demon Deacon front five winning the battle of the line of scrimmage on that drive. Skeet on for the extra point. And the crowd here in Charlottesville has been silenced. 17-3 our score. Started with the best point with Hartman and Ellison. A big, big run to get this drive started. And then to cap it off, they didn't, they didn't wait. They gave it to him coming right downhill. Stadium since 2019, but the fans stunned here. In the first half with the output by Wake Forest, the Demon Deacons up by two touchdowns. Yeah, we knew something had to give, though, because Wake Forest has won its last four matchups against Virginia, and then all of a sudden you feel a little more confident that you're facing them at home, but in the Demon Deacons here early. It'll be Virginia setting up shot at the 25-yard line. Big slate of games on Saturday. Texas Tech, Texas will get things started at noon, as well as LSU, Mississippi State, and an SEC showdown in Starkville. Rutgers, Michigan, Clemson, NC State, and West Virginia at Oklahoma. I need to see more for the upset. Sooners. I'm calling that upset right now. Are you really? Well, yeah, I'm calling that one. Where's Virginia over Oklahoma? You're going Mountaineers. Yes, yeah, I am. You heard it first, heard folks. It right here on a Friday night first. Andre Ware with his upset special of the week. Armstrong. Swallowed up behind the line of scrimmage. A sack for Wake Forest. That's Ja'Cory Johns. You know, Brennan Armstrong just got sacked, but he also limped off last possession. I was watching him in between series. Looks fine. This guy's tough as nails. He was a safety in high school. He told me yesterday when I spent some time with him, loved sticking wide receivers across the middle, but not as much as a quarterback running over linebackers. <laughs> he is not going to be afraid of contact. That is for sure. That is in and out of the hands. Incomplete pass for Billy Kemp, who tried to turn it upfield prematurely. Yeah, earlier in this game, he had a lot of time to throw the football, survey the field. All of a sudden, this Wake Forest defense, the, the defensive line in particular, starting to get there. They're starting to get home a sack to start the possession on first down, and then now making, him, making Armstrong a little uncomfortable. That ended a streak of seven consecutive completions. Armstrong missiles that one complete, and that'll move the chains. And that's where, you know, you go three-man rush, you think third and long, you can't give him that kind of time. It's too accurate. Receivers are too good to allow him to scan from left all the way back to the right. That's the last receiver in his progression. Fourth grab of the night for Wicks, Armstrong. Rolls out left and finds one of his favorite targets. That's Billy Kemp. And Kemp now Kemp's still down. Six grabs. That one for six yards. Right about his average in 2020. Just under seven catches a game for Kemp.
sprinted off the field, and then he looked to still be in some pretty good pain. See if we can get an update on him as time progresses. Meanwhile, it's Mike Hollins battering his way for four tough yards in the first half for this Virginia offense, which, again, they have been able to move the football. They have not been able to finish drives. Yeah, they've, they've moved it down the field, but it's kind of bend but don't break by this Wake Forest defense. You see in the slot, Keaton Thompson, he touched the ball 29 times in the first three weeks, has yet to touch it tonight. You would expect that number to change. Not here, it's not. Armstrong devoured behind the line for another sack. They are getting to him now in the backfield, a loss of seven. Just the four men up front. They just bring four, and they're able to get home. Jaden Hudson coming in. Makes Smitha finishing things off. But when they bring four, and this is they've been in this situation before, where second and long, third and long, force the ball out of Armstrong's hands a little bit quicker. Changes the complexion of the drive. Second and 17. Again, pressure. Penalty flags. Throw complete. There's that first touch by Thompson, but it might be coming back. We'll see. Definitely a first down if it holds up. Yeah, three flags around the 36-yard line. Offense, number 52, 10-yard penalty, second down. Joe Bissinger, the left guard, the guilty party. Yeah, Suleiman Kamara is the guy that was held. He, he came free the fastest, but... You had to figure they were going to find Thompson at some point, try to get him incorporated into this offense. Kemp is down. Uh, Talapapa, he's out for the game from the start. You see the hole here. Look at that the big fella, number one, with the quickness. There's the hole. That wipes out a 26-yard gain. By the way, Wake is doing all this without Miles Fox, the very talented defensive tackle, seventh-year senior. Got the word just before the game started that he was out tonight. Kamara's been active. All kinds of time for Armstrong. Oh, Armstrong could build a house back there. Now, finally, we'll just throw it out of bounds to avoid any yardage behind the line of scrimmage. Well, but how about the great coverage? It's like the mesh point, but the defense's version, because they saw they saw Armstrong bring his arm up, and they just stopped to try to time it and, and maybe knock the football down. Pretty good coverage down the field. In their zone look, there's really nowhere to go with the football, but they just kind of stopped and it didn't rush the passer anymore, waiting on him to, to deliver the football. And they were going to try to time it, jump it, maybe get a hand on it. They are awfully high on their secondary this year at Winston Salem. Carson, Taylor, Red, Greer, Davis. Third down at 26. Again, just a three man rush. They go underneath and a drop. Mike Hollins. Trying to make something out of very little. Taylor on the coverage for the Demon Deacons. When you have the big one, the hole, that's a drive killer. It's tough to get it back. You got a stingy defense already. And able to get themselves off the field this time and force a punt. A red hot offense waiting to take the field. You think about why Wake is so hard to beat this year and in yeah. general under Coach Clawson. Okay, turnover margin, it's, it's hard to do better than plus, plus five, five yeah. right? Nine takeaways. They rarely beat themselves. This is one of the lowest penalized teams the last three years in the ACC. But it, go, it all goes back to nine guys coming back. Yep. The continuity, the trust, you know, being in the system. Now he talked about, hey, how do you build this program? How do you get it to a point where it is? Well, he wants to get old and stay old. He's going to redshirt guys. So you're going to wake. You know, you might not play that first year. You may redshirt, and he's going to. He's got the program now to where it's junior and senior late. And once they graduate, here comes the other junior and seniors, and they're going to be tough for a long time. The former head coach of Fordham, Dave Clawson. Won a conference title there, the Patriot League. Then he goes to Richmond, wins two colonial championships with the Spiders. Has a cup of coffee with the Volunteers of yeah. Tennessee as the OC, and then goes another difficult job. How about in the MAC at Bowling Green? He wins the MAC championship in 2013. That yeah. paves the way for the head coaching job in Winston-Salem. I can't think of a better fit yeah. for this Wake Forest program. Just the discipline he has in the program to really see it through he knew the first couple of years would be bumpy right but hey let's redshirt some guys get them incorporated into the system let them learn both sides of the ball 
And, and I think it's paying dividends now. He'll tell you that Wake Forest is a developmental program. They're not going to get a bunch of four and five star kids. They got to get kids that slip through the cracks. Developmental program. He, he yeah. develops talent as well as anyone in the country. First punt of the game watch out, watch out. is a fair catch at the 25. Clark, what do you have? Yes, Mike. Starting defensive back Anthony Johnson. He finds inspiration from his mother Shaniqua, who was a single mom and raised him and his sister while working as a firefighter back home in Florida. Anthony calls his mom the perfect model for him on how to live his life, how to treat people, and how to get through adverse situations. And mom has taught him well as head coach Bronco Mendenhall says Anthony has a dynamic personality and is always locked in. Mom, you raised a fine young man. <laughs> Clark, that's fantastic. What a story. What a mom for Anthony Johnson. Right. I know it's just the first half, Andre, but you get the feeling this is a big drive in this game. It because is. <laughs> right now, Wake Forest seems to be controlling just about everything. And can't really afford, Virginia can't afford to give up points here because then you're, you're chasing all night. They, they possess the ball. Oh, nice job in that. That area. Hartman, Cox and fires complete at the 30, past the 35, and down to the 39 yard line is Taylor Marin. The pickup on the play of 15. They hit you from all different directions. Marin, the touchdown catch to get the scoring started, but Perry's been involved, Robertson's involved. Wow. Another big gain on first down. Cypress on the tackle. And that is Christian Turner, the former Michigan Wolverine. They have two Michigan transfers in the starting 22 for the Demon Deacons. Running back by committee. They keep it on the ground, churning those big legs is Turner. He goes 5'11", 205. So we've seen Bill Smith. We've seen Ellison with a big run and a touchdown running now. Christian Turner's in the game. It is running back by committee. They get it from all three guys. And now Hartman throws that one wide of the mark. Donald Stewart, the transfer from Stanford, the intended target. He's a good rotational player. Stewart missed some time last year, but he's another big bodied receiver that they rely on. Gaping wow. hole up the middle, past the 40 to the 41 is Christian Turner for seven more yards. Well, they just washed everything down, and all of a sudden Turner had a huge hole to run through to get it to third down and short. Dealer's choice, third and three. You get the feeling they can do anything here. Yeah, they can. I, I want to. I would expect the mesh and then a receiver popping open. Wait for of six on third down. There's the mesh. There's the carry. Close. And real close for Turner. His decision time. It's going to be short. And a fourth down and short here. They haven't hesitated at other points in the game when it gets to this area. They were down on the goal line, didn't hesitate, and went for it and converted. Not wasting any time at all. Smart, experienced quarterback. Looked like there might have been some motion. No penalty flag. Yeah, there it comes late. Hartman kept it and it appears change. to have it, but we'll see what the call is. Might change the offside oh, defense. No. Definitely Number 91. Five yard penalty. Result of the penalty. It's First down. The defensive end, Mandy Alonzo, critical penalty. But Hartman comes up, he gives a hard count. Trying to get the free five initially. Then when they don't jump, hey, just go under center and run the quarterback sneak. Were you a big cadence guy? Was that one of yeah, your strengths? Yeah, I had a nice cadence, hard bark, trying to always get the free ones uh, when you can, especially in short yardage situations. You were yelling at me pregame, but I took it as a, a friendly gesture. <laughs> it was. Gesture of love. First down, again, big hole up the middle, and again, good yards on first down. That's seven more on the pickup for Turner. Joey Blunt on the tackle, whose father, Tony, was a safety for Virginia back in the late 70s. With just that hesitation allows this offensive line to get up the field on linebackers, and, and that's tough to, to find the ball. Tap dancing, wow. and then going forward 
to the 21 for the first is Turner. He just kind of sat there surveying. Yeah. Okay, now I'll go hey, forward. You think, okay, why don't we attack this? You don't attack it because Hartman's going to pull it right. and, and hit a pass right behind you. So you have to play patiently mm -hmm. on defense to find the ball and, and seek it out and then go hit it. But that's tough. If you, if you come up the field, you know the ball's going out behind you. From the 21 yard line on first down. Again up the middle and again a big game. Almost lulls you to sleep. Some of these defensive linemen, I mean, it's, it's like, wait a minute, you're playing too slow. I'm used to fighting guys off and slipping blocks and making tackles. What are you doing? I mean, you're not really blocking me. Has the ball even been snapped? It's probably going through a lot of his mind. It, it takes away some of your aggressiveness. No doubt about it. Second and four, Wake Forest again just marching down the field. This will be the 11th play of the drive. Different way to play football, yet it's effective. And it just goes to show you the amazing coaching job that Dave Clawson has done at Wake Forest. Trips to the bottom of your screen, and that's where they're go. And weaving his way inside the 10-yard line, that's Keyshawn Williams, freshman out of Philadelphia. Nice edge blocks. When you get in these formations, you run these tunnel screens, you got to have some guys that are willing to do the dirty work. The guys are going to block out on the edge and hold a point of attack. You, you wonder now, do you start seeing hands on hips for that Virginia defense? Because, I mean, they're in no hurry right now. They, we've seen them at warp speed. Right now, this is just kind of a muddle huddle. Virginia can't substitute because that's when they'll go fast. Under two minutes remaining, first half. Bunch formation on first and goal. Again, a steady dose of Christian Turner, the former Michigan Wolverine. They'll gobble up six more. That's got to be tough to defend. You've got the experienced quarterback that knows exactly when to pull it, and it's coming. It's coming. As long as the run's working, you know, he'll stick with it, but at some point, he's going to take a shot. Virginia calling timeout. 17-3 our score, a minute 43 to go. I think, think we need to check in with the studio and send it over to Matt Berry. Hello, man. That sounds like a good idea. Coming up with the Sling TV halftime report, the big one at Soldier Field, Notre Dame and Wisconsin. We'll give you a matchup to watch in that one. Plus, can the Arky D get an A against Texas A&M? We're going to break that one down. And you know it, you love it, you want it. Virtual locks. America's in the lead over Joey Galloway. Jesse Palmer and Joey join me. Coming up on the Sling <laughs> Halftime Report. Hey, what? That's another team that's running it well. Arkansas. Yeah. That is a team. And yeah. A&M's and &M's going to have to score in that game. That Their offense has been sputtering a little bit with a quarterback uh, having to go to a different quarterback. Right. They've struggled on offense. Yeah. And Sam Pittman has completely changed the culture in less than two years in I, Fayetteville. I said this week, these two coaches I could play for. Yeah. I could go play for Sam Pittman. Oh, heck yeah. Oh, yeah. I could play for the big man. I have a feeling a lot of young men are thinking the same thing in the recruiting process. Hartman on second down, rifles, and that one should have been picked off. Devontae Cross had it right in his hands. I think Nick's, Nick Jackson got a hand on this, on this football. Six right into your screen, as right there in front of him, and almost rewards Cross on the back end. Just hold on to that one, and all that has happened before is for not. Another lengthy drive for Wake Forest now 14th play of the drive and it's a big one third down and goal. Hartman out of the shotgun. Cavaliers rushing three Hartman gets out of trouble delivers incomplete. Great Good coverage. coverage. E e excellent coverage block on the back end. He's a playmaker on that back end. Banged up last week against North Carolina. It was ready to go this week. Good size at 6'2", about 195 pounds. And here comes Mr. Automatic. Yeah, how about 17 straight for Nick Skiba? Yeah, he had a string of 34 straight last year that was snapped. Again, just under 90% career. That second all-time in the history of college football. Snap and hold are good. Kick, perfect. What else is new? Skiba gets it done. Wake Forest drive. 
down the field in 15 plays, 71 yards, 455 off the clock. Saturday Night Football presented by Capital One is a Big 12 statement game in Norman. How about West Virginia? Andre Ware has already called the upset. The Mountaineers are going to take it to the Sooners. That would be the first time that's happened in Norman since 1982. That'll start at 7.30 Eastern time on ABC. If this happens, I'm calling you Saturday night. Dial me up, man. I'm going to give you a big pat on the back. There it should be some Oklahoma Sooner fans that are a little scared. Last time I called for an upset against them, it happened against BYU in, uh, a few years ago. Right. They had, that's one of those scenarios where they had a bunch of skill position uh -huh. players coming back right. and, and didn't have the offensive line in sync. BYU went in there and took it to them. Boy, you're a popular man everywhere we go nationwide. I don't know if they're loving you in Norman, Oklahoma <laughs> right about now. They're just hoping I'm wrong <laughs> so they can say I told you so. Oh, goodness. Mike Morgan, Andre Ware, Paul Carcaterra. It's been fun so far, a little bit surprising. Remember, Virginia is actually a favorite in this ball game, despite the fact that Wake Forest comes in 3-0, and and they've defeated the Cavaliers four consecutive times. And that'll be out of bounds, so good field position for Virginia with a minute and 26 on the clock. The ball be placed at the 35 yard line. First down. No, actually, a minute 23. No timeouts, however, for the Cavaliers. How about this weight defense? Yeah, it's, it's been smothering at times. A couple of sacks early here in the first half, but stopping the run. They've been excellent in pass coverage and getting after the quarterback. And they've been bent, but don't break. Virginia's been able to drive the football down the field, but they get in the scoring zone, and they've been turned away a couple of times. Have yet to, to force a turnover, but boy, they have been solid on that side of the ball. 91 seconds. We'll see if Armstrong can provide some magic. Not that time. Heavy pursuit and brought down by Masterson. And number 40 for Wake Forest. That's Rondell Bathroyd. Yeah, the captain gets home. I mean, he's a, he's the leader on this team, a guy that makes the calls and a nice pass rush move, little up and under. Could not stop him from getting to the quarterback. Damon Deacons rushing five. Nice catch from behind. That's Jelani Woods, the six foot seven tight end. They're kind of waiting on him to get going, both he and Thompson. Got to figure out a way to get Thompson involved in this game. Again, no timeouts for Virginia. On third and short, jump catch complete near the 45. That's Don Tavian Wicks, and that should be a first down. They'll stop the clock momentarily. Until they move the chains. Or are they going to give him a first down? Maybe they did not. Yeah, yeah, they did. yeah it's first down. Now they got the chains in place. From the 45. Armstrong oh, heavy pursuit and he goes down again. Another sack. It's the safety. Travion Red, a runaway freight train. Yeah, he knows how to time blitzes. He lets the protection set itself and right into the front doorstep of Brennan Armstrong. That is the fourth sack for the Demon Deacons. Second and long. And that one goes nowhere. I tell you what, they they rush three. They give you a bunch of different looks. They rush four. They they come with some blitzes. As a quarterback, it makes you think every single down. Identify where they are on the field. Where am I getting the pressure? Okay, they're sitting. I got time. But then there's coverage on the back end that you just can't throw into. So they are forcing Brennan Armstrong to play the game between his ear his ears. That'd be the story of the first half. Again, Armstrong in trouble. Again goes down right near the line of scrimmage. If they give him a yard, it won't be a sack. But either way, a great play. That's Luigi Villain. What a display defensively by this Wake Forest defense. Wow. Wake Forest impressive up by 17 here in Charlottesville as we send it to the studio be this good tonight yeah they have gotten after the passer four three sack four sacks in the first half of this one basically control the game and the tempo kind of bend but don't break and they've been they've been spectacular on that side of the ball yeah four sacks 
several pressures and hurries. Virginia's offense after a couple of drives that stalled after that they really could not get much going offensively. Big first drive here in the second half and then it'll start from the 15 as we check in with Kirk. Well Mike just spoke to Virginia head coach Bronco Mendenhall and Wake Forest has 156 yards rushing. He's not thrilled with his defense by any stretch. He said they're not tackling well too many yards after contact offensively when Brennan Armstrong and this group take the field the focus they got to win their one on one matchups he says Wake Forest defensively is in a lot of single high safety looks the guys on the outside have to make plays no run game for Virginia either what it putting more pressure on Armstrong in this passing attack which will get it started with a tip and almost an interception Wake Forest who has nine takeaways on the season almost had a tenth. Yeah that's pass rush caused this errant throw. You got the big fella Bergen Junior in his face the team's best run stopper. Well he's looked pretty good at pass rush there the ball goes up and it almost went to plus six yes. in turnover margin. Jelani Woods who had a rather quiet first half the six seven tight end transfer from Oklahoma State. This is Wicks on the reception. He is stacked up and fighting for extra yards. Great second effort by the sophomore. Wicks got off to a good start. Then it got quiet for a while. Had five catches on eight targets, 72 yards, and then well, they just kind of took him out of the game. So let's talk about this Virginia offense for a moment, Andre. What do you want to see out of them in the second half? Well, they got to have some type of running game to keep. To keep this pass rush a little bit, a little bit more honest. Third and one, certainly a running down in distance, and they'll get a great gallop and a first down by Mike Hollins. Yeah, what that does when you can do that, a defensive linemen can't just pin their ears back and, and while they're down in their stance, think about their best pass rush move. They've got to play the run on the way to the quarterback and just sprinkle a little bit of that in every once in a while if you're Virginia. Armstrong and the Cavaliers will go empty backfield on first down. With time in the pocket, missiles one complete at midfield. This is the passing attack we've yeah. seen through the first three games for Virginia. And to his word, as Clark told us about Coach Mendenhall, he said, hey, we're going to start going to the guys on the outside. Well, Henry, Wicks, those guys are involved early here in the second half. Good sign as well. Billy Kemp is back in the game. He was shaken up in the first half. He's at the bottom of your screen. In plus territory on first down again with time. Now flushed out. Armstrong put a tuck and run. Again, plenty of athleticism out of this young man. And Armstrong gets inside the 20 and tiptoes out of bounds at the 17 yard line. A scamper of 31 yards. Right, excellent job with some edge blocks along the way that allowed Armstrong to turn up the field. He's, he's, uh, he's just fast enough to make plays where it keeps the defense honest. It's a nice start to the second half for Virginia. That was the book on Armstrong last year. Good athlete but didn't know a ton about his passing skill this year. It's been all about that left arm which will go to work here in the corner and that one too high and out of the reach of Henry who was well covered on the play. Yeah but he went to the right place with the ball. And they ran a smash route where you have a little six yard uh, sit down by the outside receiver. The inside receiver is going to the corner of the end zone. Read it perfectly. Just pretty good coverage on the back end. But that's where you go with the football. Seventh play of the drive. An important one to start off the second half down 17. Reset things. Four in the pattern for Armstrong. Steps up in the pocket. Rifles one complete. And a second ever touchdown by Jelani Woods, the tight end. 17 yards and a score. Been calling for it all night. The big fella get down in the red zone at 6-7. You have to be an option. You have to be involved in what's going on offensively. And he waited out the 6-7 Jelani Woods. 
delivered it on time. Excellent placement of the football. And just the size takes over. He's got guys just bouncing off of it. Easily the best drive of the night for Virginia. Seven plays, 85 yards, 223 off the clock. Dunkel on for the extra point. Sneaks it through the upright, and it's a 10-point game in Charlottesville. Yeah, a little square in by the tight end, Jelani Woods. Home of State. You see what they did on that last drive, 85 yards. They only had 141 total in the first half. Woods was a guy who was a, a high school quarterback, played for Mike Gundy's offense at Oklahoma State. Felt he was underutilized, transferred here, and they're awfully glad they have him in Charlottesville. Williams takes it out, and he is smothered right near the 15-yard wow, line. Him. Little extra juice right now yeah. out of the Cavaliers. Saturday night football. Speaking of juice, they'll have it in Norman, Oklahoma. The Sooners taking on West Virginia. Looking for their first win in Norman since 1982. It starts at 7.30 Eastern time on ABC and the ESPN app. Okay, Andre Ware. Spencer Radler, you already called the upset. Yep. So basically you're saying Spencer Radler might have an off night. Could be, or West Virginia's just got enough offensively to keep Spencer Rattler on the sideline. They've got, they've got enough on that side of the ball to, to more than score with the Sooners. Does Virginia have enough, si enough on this side of the ball to change the complexion of this game? And I'm talking about defensively. That's a great question. It hadn't happened to this point. You've got the experienced Sam Hartman spreading the ball around, and they're off to a pretty good start. That's where it's got to happen in the secondary and pressure up front. They have not been able to get to Hartman. There's that delayed mesh point handoff into the belly of Christian Beal Smith, who picks up four more and another first down. Just methodical each and every drive. And you look at that. You want to talk about an impact number? That spells success right there. And they had it again to start the second half, the first drive, first play to, to Morin. Went for about nine yards. Again to the ground, and again to Christian Beal Smith, the All ACC performer from a year ago. It's just, just tough. If you don't know where the ball is. You come up field, all of a sudden Hartman pulls it out of there, and you know it's coming. There it is. That's the play there you're talking is. about. Caught at the 45 by Roberson. Shifty inside the 30 and escorted out of bounds near the 25. Just hold it, hold it. Here comes the linebackers. You vacate an area, and all of a sudden, Roberson is off to the races. Got to be frustrating for a defense. 44 yard pickup, the biggest pass play of the game for the Demon Deacons. And now a steady dose of Beal Smith again on the ground, probing the right side. As the experience of Hartman tells you that it's coming. Mm -hmm. You know, go ahead, take that step up. He caught Noah Taylor, the inside linebacker, from flying up inside the help, right behind him. Hartman sees nobody open. That's okay. He will. Scamper out to about the 15 yard line before it tripped up by Joey Blunt. They're just living in third down and short. And that makes it tough. Makes it extremely tough to play defense when it's that situation always favors the other side of the ball. Wake Forest has been nearly automatic on these type of situations tonight. Third and a yard. Behind the left side of that line, stacked up. I don't think he got there. Bill Smith brought down in a bear hug by Antonio Clary. And he had plenty of friends with him. Yeah, one of the best weapons in, in all of college football in terms of the kicker, Skiba. But they're going to roll the dice here. They've been just about perfect in short yardage situations tonight. Bill Smith straight ahead, banging bodies and out to the first down. Great second effort by the redshirt junior out of Winston-Salem. It just kind of shows you they can run the mesh and slow things down, wait for it to develop, and or 
they can just come downhill on you and get the pistol and come right at this Virginia front seven. This was not the response that Bronco Mendenhall and company had hoped for out of that Virginia defense. You get a great drive on offense. And here's Wake Forest right back at you. This will be the ninth play yeah, of the drive. Got to have some stops. And you've got to hold to at least a field goal here. Going with a little Wildcat. And a little razzle dazzle into the hands of Hartman. Wide open end zone. Touchdown. What a call. Blake Whitehart, the tight end for a 12 yard score. Just like they took that one out of the Virginia playbook. I mean, gave it to Hartman, and, and all of a sudden, the tight end, Whitehart, is wide open in the end zone. I He's thought. Lady. I thought Virginia was the razzle dazzle team. Yeah. Where <laughs> they've got a formation where three quarterbacks or former quarterbacks have touched the football and a completion. Well, that came right out of Virginia's playbook. Goodness, did that take the air out of this building after an impressive opening drive for the Cavaliers? Man, what Wake a Forest comes right yeah. back down. They responded right back to that scoring drive. Nine plays, 83 yards. They're taking a look to see if Whitehart got a foot down. I didn't, I didn't think it was any doubt that he got it down before he went out of bounds. Waiting on it to make sure. Oh, yeah, he's in a couple of times. Now he came into this game with one reception on the year. Now he's got two in the game and one for a score. Juan Ruggiero has called a magical oh, game. I, he's he's in a he's in a groove right now. Yes, he is. Uh, everything he dials up seems to work to perfection. Mr. Automatic, Nick Skeever, tacks on the extra point. How about Wake Forest tonight? Beal Smith to Hartman to the tight end, Whitehart. Wake Forest on top by 17. Because there's no doubt in Virginia's mind, they're running the football. And all of a sudden, you get everybody up the field, you leak the tight end, Whitehart out, nobody on the back end. This is an easy layup for Sam Hartman. What a throw, what a catch, and an even better design. And what a drive chart for Wake Forest, who has racked up 357 total yards. They have scored on every drive. We haven't had a chance to tell you about their punter. He's a fine young man, but he hasn't been needed in this game thus far. Virginia's woes on defense continue and put a little more pressure on that offense as Hollins brings it out and races to the 30. Ankle tackle to the 36. Clark, what do you have? We'll tell you about the penalty flag first, and then we'll get to Paul Carcaterra. Well, Wake has scored on every possession. During the return, we have two penalties on the receiving team. Holding, number 30, receiving team. Penalties decline. Holding, number 25, receiving team. At the distance to the goal, first down. Gentlemen, if you recall earlier in the week, Dave Clawson told us Virginia has a counter for everything. So heading down to the field before the third quarter, I asked him, where does he think Virginia will counter? He said in the first half, Brennan Armstrong was in a lot of empty sets. He thinks in the third and fourth quarters, a lot of misdirections, jet sweeps. They're going to bring it all. And they're already in a set that we haven't seen with two guys in the backfield here. Behind the left side of the line. That's 26, Devin Darrington, the transfer from Harvard. Staff has high hopes for him. They think he's going to be a key part of this offense. Again, if you're joining us late, Wayne Talapapa, their top running back, out of this game. So already playing shorthanded in the backfield. On second down and eight. Five in the pattern for Armstrong coming back and making the catch at the 20. That is Malachi Fields. First time we've called that young man's name tonight. Yeah, he, he ran a heck of a route. He was covered up. They had a high low uh, kind of coverage going on him. He just worked his way back to the football. Freshman 
Kinswick, Virginia, a very bright future. From the 21, Armstrong. In and out of the hands of the back, that's Ira Armstead. He saw a flash of white right before him, wanted to reel it in and run at the same time. You gotta Defense. do one first. More than 11 players on the field at the snap. Five yard penalty, first down. A rare miscue by Wake Forest, only the third penalty of the night. They usually don't see that. Wake Forest, they don't beat themselves. Very disciplined football team that they make you earn every yard. You see Wake Forest, and that is just a calling card of the Dave Clawson team. They do not make many mistakes. Very well coached, very well disciplined. Wake shots pressure here. And they bring it off the edge. Armstrong feels the heat. Armstrong goes down again. The fifth sack for Wake Forest. Luke Masterson, the fifth year senior out of Naples, Florida. Well, they have done a magnificent job of reading the, the offensive line, timing it up in terms of where the protection is setting itself, and then wherever it's weakest. They've exploited it and gotten home five times tonight. This is not to take away anything from the Wake defense. We know they were good. I think the more surprising thing is how much Virginia up front is struggling right now. Yeah, I mean, it's an offensive line. that had four guys, four offensive linemen return for Virginia. Second and long. Perfect pass, perfect route, and a first down for Henry. There's the talent. Of Armstrong. There's not an area on this field that he can't touch through the air. 15 yards, ball out to the 35. Under seven minutes remaining, third quarter. And the way Wake Forest has moved the ball on offense, every drive becomes pivotal Ooh. for Virginia on the offensive end. You're ruling this a fumble. Well, this is going to be interesting. First off, let's see who's got it. And then, no doubt, this will be reviewed. Valane came out of it with the football. They ruled it a fumble Ruling initially. The field is that ball came loose. We have a fumble, first down. Wow. Well, this, it, this would be huge, but this is definitely going to be looked at. It is a turnover. And I, I mean, at, at initial glance, this looked very close. I thought it was a pass yeah. initially. I, I mean, that would be forward, would it not? It looks that way. It looks like almost like he's trying to throw a screen pass, but there's nobody in the area but the offensive lineman. Is under further review. If the ruling is overturned, there was a receiver in the area. Expert, this was an easy one, right? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it really was. Even though it was strange looking, he did have full control. His hand did come forward. He just didn't throw it very hard, but it was a pass. So Virginia still in business on second down, and that's one is perfectly placed and breaking tackles streaking down the sideline Jelani Woods Andre you call for him he's delivering got to get the ball to playmakers and you got a guy that can run at six seven with good hands I mean that's a heck of a catch thrown behind him he reaches around grabs it and then gets right back in stride to find a way to get him in more involved in this offense 32 yards of first down for the Cavaliers on play action, Armstrong. Little dump pass, complete. Went out to the 27 yard line. That is Devin Darrington. Brought down by DJ Taylor, who was trying to tackle the football. We got a great player down. Looks like Kalen Carson, very talented defensive back there, shut down corner. Already has two interceptions on the season. How about this? I mentioned nine takeaways. Yeah. Seven different Wake Forest defenders have a takeaway already this season through three plus games. That, that, that's an amazing number for a defense that is starting to get a whole lot of respect, especially after tonight's performance. Big Saturday, a lot of teams looking for respect. Texas Tech and Texas. LSU at Mississippi State. Or if you're at Orgeron, you don't want to lose that one. In Starkville, Rutgers, Michigan, Clemson, NC State. Can the Wolfpack pull off the upset? 
three thirty Eastern time. I know the commissioner Jim Phillips who yeah. actually came to the booth say hello here tonight. He's going to be going back and forth. He's going to be at the couple of games. Yeah tomorrow. he's, he, he's going to watch the Georgia Tech North Carolina game and a nightcap and he's also got I believe Missouri Boston College yeah, so that's, that's where he's going first. he's got he's got three games in a 24 hour span picking up those frequent flyer miles yeah, he is moving and shaking well, Andre you and I get to sit back and survey and watch some games I, I mean I, to me LSU Mississippi State that is very intriguing in a Western division where low, people are shocking. Game there for Absolutely. LSU. I know one thing, they're not going to play 60 minutes of man to man defense against a Mike Leach team <laughs> offense again. And you already heard Andre with an upset special West Virginia over Oklahoma. On second and three, Armstrong cocks and fires and completes it inbounds at the 22. That is Mish on the reception. Cut. Yeah, I think Rutgers, Michigan is intriguing. I mean, two years ago, Michigan absolutely throttled Rutgers. Last year, it was an overtime game. Michigan looks like they're back, but these are the games sometimes. They've had some letdowns in that Jim Harbaugh era. So I think this could be a statement game for Michigan, but also to see how far Greg Schiano has taken this Rutgers program. Card putting the Wolverines on upset alert. As Jim Harbaugh finally had the team. Oh, they are running it well, aren't they? Yeah, they are so far. Bobbled on the snap. Armstrong rips it and somehow completes it for a score. How in the world did he get that one through to Don Tavian Wicks? Boy, the ball placement by Armstrong is just sick on that play. And I actually think they get they may have to take a look to see if he actually reeled this one in, but Wicks has had some kind of ball game. I mean, this is threading the needle, isn't it? That is, that's some throw. Uh, this one might come back as well, though. It looks like Gavin Holmes was all over it. Mm, just not sure. Matt Austin, we're gonna keep you busy here in this third quarter. What do you think? Right there, it looked like the ball hit the ground, but did he have control of it beforehand? It's it's really hard to tell from that view. I think it actually knocked the wind out of him. And you can see the ball loose right yeah, there. I, I do. I, yeah, I don't think he's got full control of that. I think that's what it is. Again, no question they're going to take a look at it. Virginia is lining up for the extra point. They're trying to get this thing kicked, but we definitely need to take a look at this. Oh, boy. Given permission to go ahead and kick it without taking a look. <laughs> They're not actually not going to replay this. Bob Welch, the replay official, and the extra point is going to be hammered home. And that's all she wrote. Now Virginia catches wow. a break. A nine play 92 yard drive with a controversial play in the end zone that will go for a touchdown and will stand. And I'm just wondering if he, it's a heck of a throw and an attempt on a catch, but I don't know if it was aided by the ground because that ball looked like it definitely came out. It's loose right there. The point of it hits. I mean, is it? Is it secure? Yeah, I mean, you hit on the key point. It, it's a bobble before it hits the ground. That's one of those, if it's ruled incomplete on the field, I can't imagine it gets overturned and called a touchdown. I mean, at the very least, every play being reviewed, stop that baby and take a closer look. I think we're all a little bit wow. surprised on that one, but good for Virginia. Yeah, we got uh, a ball game. And we got a ball game. And again, a great effort by Wicks. Another sizzling throw from Brennan Armstrong. You see that arm talent, which is certainly elite. Now the question becomes, can Virginia's defense do something? Catch or not, where he put the ball there, yeah. only Wicks was going to catch it. Now this season, along with their contributions to university's general scholarship funds for every field goal and extra point made, all state will also be donating to the American Red Cross to help with disaster relief efforts. Thank you 
all state. Matt Austin some extra thoughts on that last call. Well I just want to, to let everybody know what the mechanic is the replay official does look at every play so he I'm sure he looked at that before he turned the referee loose he thought it was a catch so but it, it was reviewed. Wake Forest back on offense and back to Justice Ellison the freshman out of Ashburn Virginia squeezes out a couple second and eight. At some point, Andre Ware, Virginia has to dial up a stop on defense, and that won't help because that's one of their top linemen, Falmui, Aaron Falmui, the junior out of Honolulu. Young man who opted out of football last year due to COVID decided I need to just go back home to Hawaii. And they're without Adib Yatariwa. Who's out tonight with an injury? He's a big difference maker at defensive end. They moved from Mui from basically his nose tackle spot out to to defensive end for tonight's ball game. So you talk about already shorthanded mm -hmm. on the defensive line. Now they've got to go deeper into the depth chart. For a defense that has really been porous tonight, Wake Forest 359 total yards. As we take another look here. Kind of gets twisted up and then friendly fire. One of his couple of players fall on him as he's in an awkward position. And Virginia. Defensive players huddled around and obviously hoping for the best for their teammate. Yeah. You I mean, just hate to see that when guys just kind of out of position and awkwardly on the ground and the guys are just landing on him. What a thing he could do. Quite honestly, I'm surprised we don't see more of this. Yeah. With, with the size of the bodies and all the awkward angles of getting hit. And landing funny and everything else that you see. Thankful that we don't see more of it. Trying to see if they can get the big man up at this point. Now Louis. 300 pound junior out of Honolulu again last year like so many players had to make a decision. Do you play. With the threat of COVID, or do you opt out and go home? He opted out, went back to his hometown of Honolulu, Hawaii, long ways away. Watched his Virginia squad, his teammates couldn't wait to get back on the field this year. It's good to see him walking. And that on. is a great sign. What is troubling for Virginia is if he is out for any length of time in this game. You've got a defensive line that has already been gashed, and now you're taking away one of your yeah. most physical players. Injuries up front. That's you know, not an ideal thing when you're facing a Wake Forest team that kind of had their way in the running game already. Hartman back out there out of the shotgun on second and eight. From the pocket, fires complete. Right near the marker and should be a first down. A.T. Perry, who might be a rising star for this Wake Forest offense, a six foot five wide receiver with good hands. Just short. Third and short. And Wake Forest has been so good in these situations tonight. Every time it just seems like they push the pile. And they got Justice Ellison, who is. Been just about automatic in short yarded situations. Broke a big run, capped it off with a touchdown run. On first down, Hartman steps up in the pocket, delivers a strike, caught at the 41, wiggling his way to the 33 yard line. Jaquari Roberson, the all ACC wideout. What a nice protection, and you see Hartman drive and step up in the pocket to further protect himself. That allows him to find Roberson coming right into his vision. That'll go for 31. 
Wake will not let you sub because they're not going to huddle. They quickly get to the line, snap off another play, and keep Virginia back on its heels. That's Ellison again for another nine yards. And they lock you in defensively to that last look and just take advantage of you that way. Ellison probes the right side and falls ahead for the first down, but a penalty flag on the play. Offside, defense, number 10, five-yard penalty, resulted a penalty, first down. And it seems like every time this Virginia team comes to life, they go down, they put points on the scoreboard. Now it's on the defense, just get us a stop. And methodically, and, and I mentioned it earlier, they've, Wake has scored on every single drive, and they've averaged 10 plays, at least 10 plays per drive. They were averaging. That's a tough way to fight yourself back well, into a football it game. It really is. And, you know, they were averaging over six yards a run at halftime, just playing downhill. I mean, they don't do that. Hartman hits you over the head with a perfect strike with his arm. There's Turner on another carry. And again, just it, it's like death by a thousand paper cuts. Yeah. Four yards here, five yards there, six yards here. It's frustrating. It really is. And when you don't huddle, you see, now you're starting to see more hands on hips. Defenses start getting a little yeah. bit tired. Because the minute Virginia tries to run a guy off and run one on, that's when Wake will step on the gas and catch a guy out of position and make him pay for it. Tight formation on second and six. Hartman, corner out, and that one. One of the rare throws that was not quite on target, but a penalty flag right near the spot that he threw it. This may be against Virginia. Personal foul, illegal hands to the face. Yeah. Defense, number 10, half the distance to the goal, automatic, first down. It's actually Ben Smiley, who's normally 75. He's wearing 10 tonight. Smiley had the offsides penalty, gave Wake Forest the first down and now uh, legal hands to the face going to give him another automatic first down. It's just a killer because you're playing against a team that does not beat themselves. If you're making mistakes down 10 on offense yeah. scoring on every drive it, it's almost becomes and you almost locked into having him on the field. You can't take him off because mm -hmm. I mentioned earlier Wake will, will quick snap you. another penalty flag. Reversing field and a great push. That's Turner. They love his physicality, but we'll see what this laundry is all about. Mostly when it's coming from that line, Judge, it's the offsides again. Illegal formation. Oh. Offense. More than five players lined up in the backfield. Five yard penalty. First down. Well, that's a noose flash. Well, Wake Forest. Yeah, it was a relief for this from this Virginia fan base. Didn't have seven on the line of scrimmage. You don't see many formation penalties out of this Wake Forest offense. Hey, you would just love if you're Virginia here to hold them to a field goal. Keep this a two possession game. Yeah, it'd be hard pressed to find two better receivers, Roberson and Perry in the ACC. Yeah, he was not ready for the snap. Hartman was it. Penalty flag and just throwing it to get rid of it. That play was doomed from the start. Motion, offense, number 10, moving forward after snap. Yeah, just a bit of the penalty is declined. Second down. Michael Jurgens, the center, went a little early. He was ready. It looked like Hartman was trying to change the play. Or at the very least, reset protection, and all of a sudden he, he's lucky that the ball came right to him. Sam Hartman out of the shotgun, already with two touchdown passes tonight, looking for a third here. Back of the end zone, no chance. Roberson was back there, but sails over his head out of bounds. And yeah, I see Bronco, what he's doing is it's still going to be first down no matter where if he takes the yardage. So he's trying to run him out of downs and right. at least force. 
you know, the field goal attempt. Down here, you feel like condensed area. You can hold up for two downs. Right. And maybe force a field goal attempt by, by Skiba. This becomes a mammoth play in this game. Demon Deacons five for nine on third down. Here comes the blitz. Hartman delivers. Caught. Touchdown. Perry. A.T. Perry. What a read by Sam Hartman. They're going to give a two look and then the safety. They're, the safety rotates in. You're going to see the safety here rotate from his two deep look to a single safety look. They rotate down. Excellent read by Hartman. He knows he's got one on one on the outside. That is how you deal the football. And you're going up against a good corner in Fentrell Cypress, but he's only 5'11. And Perry is every bit of 6'5. And as you mentioned, the read, the execution by Sam Hartman. We are seeing some great quarterback play tonight. We're going to review this. We're going to see if Perry actually held on to the football, but that is that is next level stuff. And he goes away from the rotation. So the weakness is setting up the one on one outside from Perry. The safety rotates to the middle. The other safety rotates down. Now the strong side for the defense is to his right. He goes right where he's supposed to with the football over to Perry. See a bobble there. And Touchdown, isn't it? It gets ripped away late. Matt Austin, we're going to keep you busy again in this third quarter. Yeah, I, I have this being a touchdown. He's an upright receiver. He catches the ball. He turns his body. He gets taken to the ground, out of bounds. He even puts the ball in one hand. Yeah, once that it crosses. He's got full control. And it crosses too, right, Matt? Well, yes. Yes, I think right now if he's got full control, he's got a touchdown. Agree with, I'm in agreement with Matt there. I, I, I will go along with it. Yeah, I, I hate I that we've that gotten to the touchdown. point where, I mean, if it's not perfect, <laughs> we find a reason to take away a touchdown in, in a lot of these situations, take away a reception. I, that's the one part of replay that wears a little thin on me. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. There we go. Matt Austin all over it. And so, too, is A.T. Perry. And Sam Hartman, and, and you made a key point, Andre, you know, sometimes your OC dials up a great play, but a lot of that play is by Sam Hartman on the fly. Well, he talked to to, uh, to us this week about the mental aspect of the game and really getting in the film room. You don't make that play if you haven't studied defenses and knowing exactly. They do this, I do this. And they rotate down. That's the perfect place to go. You know you got the one-on-one -on -one on that uh, in that situation to the 6-5 period. Extra point up and through another great drive for the Demon Deacons who have scored on every drive tonight now leading at 34 17 Clark had a chance to speak to the dynamic signal caller for the Cavaliers Brennan Armstrong earlier. Coach Mendenhall described you as the following an iron cage fighter a stock trader. Mm, I'd probably buy those, but I'm probably not selling them. <laughs> a backcountry guide, a deep sea fisherman, and a pipeline worker. Which one do you connect most with? Um, I would say, I think the coolest one and the one I would want to be probably is the iron cage fighter, um, just because that just sounds the coolest. Um, you might get you might get yourself in some deep trouble <laughs> during it, but uh, I just Couple think black eyes. yeah, black guys maybe knocked out. You don't know what you're gonna get into with that stuff, but I think that's just the most um, for what I like to do and like you know fighting and just fighting for every yard and things like that. I think that's the most relevant to me occupation. Return by Hollins, upended at the 15. Tomorrow night, two title fights. The return of Nick Diaz to the Octagon to take on the former champ, ruthless Robbie Lawler. That highlights UFC 266. It's a stack card. Catch the prelims on ESPN News, ESPN Deportes, ESPN Plus, starting at 8 Eastern, followed by the main card on pay-per-view to order in English or Spanish. 
Go to ESPNplus.com slash PPV. And I'll tell you what, Brennan Armstrong, when we had that conversation yesterday, he told me if he wasn't playing football, he could see himself in the octagon. And honestly, <laughs> tough guy, tatted up. He's from Ohio, kind of looks the part. I wouldn't want to go against them. Clark, you were the perfect guy to read that promo. Yeah, no you'd, you'd be the perfect hype man for UFC. I could feel <laughs> the passion in your voice on that. I love UFC. It's awesome. <laughs> well, Virginia would love some more points. Going to have to get a couple of stops, though. Darrington on Clark, the carry. I asked Clark yesterday. I said, boxing or UFC? Without hesitation, UFC. Yeah. Now, you seem to disagree. You're, yeah, well, I'm a boxing guy. Yeah, I like, you're the, old I school. like the, there's some strategy, and, and there is a UFC as well, but there's an art, uh, in my opinion, to boxing. But I've just, I just, you know, grown up loving, loving that sport. Who's your guy? Who'd you grow up loving? Oh, who are you kidding? I did not love Muhammad Ali, Sugar Ray Leonard. I was giving you, others. you're not that old. I mean, you, oh, Ali was. I watched some, a, a ton of Ali fights growing up. That was Actually was, was in tears when Leon Spinks beat him. Ah. Then I had the uh, opportunity to meet Leon Spinks in, uh, in Las Vegas one year. I was out for March Madness when he was there. I'm sounding like Eddie Murphy and coming to America, but Muhammad Ali was 72 when he lost that fight. <laughs> <laughs> Third and seven. Deep ball down the sideline. Contact. That's going to be a penalty on the Demon Deacons. Wicks had his man beat. Jasir Taylor with an extra push. And that'll be a first down for the Cavaliers. Well, there are some pieces in this offense. Kemp, Henry, Wicks has had a big game. He found himself open again. Pass interference. Offense. Oh, wow. Oh. Oh. Penalties to climb. Fourth down. Oh, my. I thought for sure that was going to be on Taylor. Maybe a little hand fighting, a little combat fighting here, Kark, on Wicks. And then just pushing himself, propelling himself forward. Wow. He got caught. That is a tough. Tough break for Wicks and Virginia. And a fourth and seven backed up inside their own 10. Jacob Finn on the punt. It's been a quiet day for punting tonight. Field of that midfield by Morin. And the sure handed Taylor Morin takes it out to the 44 yard line of Virginia. A 41 yard punt, a seven yard return. College game day presented. By the Home Depot is headed to the Windy City on Saturday for number 12 Notre Dame and number 18 Wisconsin live from Soldier Field. It all starts at 9 a.m. Eastern Time on ESPN and the ESPN app. Who do you like in that one? Oh boy, you caught me there. You got to give me time to I, think about that. Yeah, one. I would feel I would I'd be more prone to call the upset if it was at Camp Randall. Yeah, but Soldier Field, I, I can't pull the trigger. On first down, Hartman will go into the fetal position after a modest pickup of a couple. That's one I thought maybe he would give, a, give that one off to Bill Smith. You know, Hartman tonight with another three touchdown passes. That gives him 42 for his career. If he hangs around, yeah, he, the he looks like he's shaken up a little bit. Well, that is a little bit of a limp on the way. I don't see where he took the shot. Just kind of goes down. And that'll be the end of quarter number three. Final 15 from Charlottesville coming your way. Damon Deacons up 34 17. 88% illumination. That's what I'm told by spotter Lee Torben. Inside scoop. Penalty flag on the play as Beal Smith races down the sideline, but this one might be coming back. A pretty view is what it was. Holding. Offense. Number 59. 10 yard penalty. Second down. Nagasamnia. See him just inside as. Bill Smith tries to escape out. Just got a handful of jersey. Not sure.
sure he needed to. Nice little jump, jump stop from Bill Smith, and he was off to the races. Young man out of Cameroon. They got a shot of the moon over there themselves. One of the play cards. <laughs> I got a fever, and the only prescription is more moon here on this Friday night. You guys with these fancy names. Look like a three-quarter moon to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sticking with my 88% illumination. <laughs> Tight window and incomplete. Intended for number two. That's Donald Stewart, the transfer from Stanford. Draped on the coverage by Anthony Johnson, who had him step for step. Yeah, he's played some game. He's played a tough football game tonight. Now stop me if you've heard this before, but a big third down for this Virginia defense. Third down and 18. This would be the first stop tonight in terms of scoring for Wake Forest. They've scored every possession. They only rush three. Hartman all day to throw, and you can't give him that much time. He will carve you up, and that's exactly what he does to Keyshawn Williams. Boy, the protection. Excellent up front. And you give this young man this much time, he's just waiting routes out. Going to find Keyshawn Williams for another big first down. And Wake on the move once again. That's 28 yards. I mean, if you give Sam Hartman that much time, he's going to find the open man, right? 68% on the year so far for Sam Hartman. Hartman, quick drop. And delivers another strike right on target to Stewart again. Pick up with eight yards. They're dialing up every defense. Yeah. So there they try to bring some pressure. Wake Forest, they pick it up. But Hartman recognizes the blitz. It's coming. Ball comes out quickly. Nice adjustment as well by the receivers to break things off. One of the rare times today, no positive yardage on the carry. Beal Smith stacked up and dropped quickly after a loss of about two yards. And Noah Taylor coming in there, flying up. That's good. That's when that's when uh, Hartman pulls it and tosses it right where the blitzer's coming from. Now here we go, another third down, third and four. Hartman this time pressured and in and out of the hands of Williams. Got a flag another down. Another penalty flag. That's at about the 12-yard line. We got an offensive pass interference, though. Pass interference, offense, number two. By the way, you see big number 94 there. That's Foul Louie back on the field. Fourth down. Now, that's good news for Virginia. What's also good well, news is they finally got a third down stop. And you're asking, why is he declining the penalty? It's because they just converted uh, third and super long right. on you uh, a couple of the, the previous third down. But here it's almost uh, Mr. Automatics out there, Nick. Skiba, and this is well within his range. And he's looking for his 19th consecutive field goal. From 35 yards out, Skiba gets it to go again. And that makes it a three possession game. Demon Deacons 37. Cavalier himself at the bottom of the standings in the ACC. Then they hired a guy by the name of Jim Grobe. Remarkable turnaround, won the ACC back in 2006. Thanks in large part to one Riley Skinner who rewrote the record books in Winston-Salem. And yeah. you look at what Grove did and then what Clawson has done already in his eight years with the program, just an amazing turnaround. And I think if people were skeptical about Wade coming into tonight's game, they have come away with a much different opinion because if things hold up, you improved to 2-0 and yeah. in the league. You improved to 4-0 and overall. I would have to think they're on the verge of top 25 consideration. And this is a team that doesn't have many weaknesses, Andre. Yeah, and, you know, the thing that, that Dave Clawson did was he the first phone call he made was to Jim Grove. You know, how did you do it? How were the successful years? And he told him, he said, you know, you, you redshirt, you build, you develop. It's exactly the blueprint that Dave Clawson has used. And he's I mentioned it earlier. One, you get old and you stay old. And that's one of the things that I remember having a conversation with Jim Grove myself that he regretted. They went to the the Orange Bowl and oh boy, Godala one up here. And he's felt the pressure to 
play younger players, uh, start to go recruit the four and five star guys and things of that sort. And they got away from his blueprint of success. And that's exactly what uh, what Dave Clawson learned from. And he has stuck to the plan. He's been a winner everywhere he's been. Again, from Fordham to Richmond to Bowling Green. And now at Winston-Salem, five consecutive bowl games, and they're trying to beat Virginia for the fifth consecutive time. That's never happened in the history of this rivalry. Now this is this team is for real. We talked about all the the starters coming back. That gives you a shot. Eleven starters on offense coming back, and then the nine on the defensive side of the football. The bowl appearances, a lot of success here. For this Wake Forest program. Third down and 10 for this Virginia offense. Five man rush for the Demon Deacons. Armstrong running for his life. He's done a lot of that today, and now he gets to show off the footwork. Again, a great athlete, a former safety, who certainly can run and does so there for 23. I'm surprised he went out of bounds. I thought for sure he was going to cut it back to the middle of the field. Once he escaped trouble, I thought right there he was going back to the middle of the field. Looking for somebody to truck. Timeout on the field. Wake Forest up by 20. Cavaliers in the late 80s, and you remember one Herman Moore. Look at those numbers, school records, first round draft pick at the Detroit Lions, and yes, one teammate yeah. of the man to my right. Best hands Andre I've ever Ware. seen. Yeah. yeah, best hands on a receiver I've ever seen. He caught everything away from his body. A little trickery here. Keaton Thompson. Will take the snap, pitch it to Armstrong, back to Thompson. Thompson, the former quarterback at Mississippi State, weaving his way through traffic. And finally wrestled down. He's going to take a host of defenders with a great effort. We thought we would see more of Keaton Thompson in this game. That goes for 17 yards. I thought he would be a bigger uh, part of the game plan. And this one mentioned that he touched it. 29 times in the first three games and not anywhere near as much tonight. Armstrong back in the shotgun on first down. Good time. And we'll go underneath and through the hands of Grant Mish, the tight end. Thought that one was going to get reeled in. They've got some talented tight ends. Mish, we've seen Jelani Woods. He's got his hands up, maybe asking, asking out here. Well, I mean, you're down three scores, so time is definitely a factor here with 11:26 to go. Let's see if Armstrong goes downfield here. He sure does. Deep downfield, a lot of contact, and no flags. Oh, they're just letting him play. Intended for Wins Carson on the coverage. A lot of bumping, a lot of hand fighting, but it's coming from both guys. The officials that you see Wicks pushing off a little bit. You see the hand fighting going on with Carson. Both guys doing it, they let him play. Wicks with that sick catch in the end zone for a touchdown. He's had a nice. Nice evening. On third down and ten. Pressure. Armstrong dancing out of trouble. Now dancing to his right. And throws a jump ball caught by the 6-7 Woods again. That's Herman Moore like. Because you can just throw it to an area. When you have a big guy like that that catches the ball away from his body. That's that's a big catch radius by the six seven <laughs> woods. It's a weapon you got to go to a little more often. Well, the high school quarterback Jelani Woods. Four grabs 73 yards for Woods. This one complete to Henry. And shoved out of bounds at the 18 yard line by Taylor and a late penalty flag. Mixing it up a little bit. A little too much extra on the part of Taylor.
they really haven't had a whole lot of problems moving the ball. It's just been stopping Wake Forest is the defensive side for Virginia. I mean, Armstrong's thrown for 316 already on the night. Or who this is going to be called on. It looked like Henry did the majority of the the extra. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, number two, yeah. offense, striking, 15-yard penalty, the down counts, second down. Goodness. That is number two first unsportsmanlike conduct of the game. Yeah, it seemed as though Henry Taylor was composed. Henry just He's lost his composure a little bit. And now you back him up 15. And set up another second and long. Armstrong goes down. No, he doesn't. A Houdini act. Armstrong buying time. And then almost a terrific twisting catch by Billy Kemp. And Masterson. With another sack opportunity, and I thought he just about bagged Armstrong again. He's been there several times. He's an excellent blitzer. And that time, the stronger Armstrong was able to escape. How many times have we called? Oh, Captain has been, uh, he's been on a mission. Number 12 in white has been outstanding tonight. Causing a lot of havoc in that Virginia backfield. Now a third down and 18. Here comes the blitz. Armstrong, Cox and Fires deep down the sideline. Again, a lot of contact, but no call as Henry is the intended target. Carson on the coverage for the Demon Deacons. Yeah, take your hat off to Lyle Hemphill, the defensive coordinator for Wake Forest. He has called one heck of a game. Both guys on both sides of the football. Have been uh, have been right on point when they need stops. They've been able to get them when they need to get to the quarterback. They've been able to get there. And it's just been genius on the offensive side. I don't know if you can call a much better game like you said on both sides for Wake Forest. Armstrong to his right. And that one wide of the mark. It is a secondary that's good and deep. And it causes. A turnover on downs for Virginia. And with 10 14 to go, you're running out of opportunities if you're the Cavaliers. It's an NC State in an ACC showdown in West Virginia. Taking on the Sooners in Norman. Time is on the side of Wake Forest, who's been able to ground and pound seemingly whenever they want in this game. And that hasn't been called upon. It's been Sam Hartman delivering another impressive game. Three more touchdown passes. He's got 42 in his career. The school record is Riley Skinner, part of those great Jim Grove teams. Yeah. He had 60. He's got a lot of time. Though. I was going to say, there's no reason to think Sam Hartman isn't going to break I a lot of records. I started looking at this offense, and we've made a lot out of, you know, 11 starters returning. The only guy that's not coming back next year is Brandon Chapman. Mm -hmm. you know, they, other than that, they're all coming back again. Yeah. <laughs> and it's still early in 2021. But, you know, we can... We can pull a curtain back and look at in the 2022. That's amazing to me. Kark, what do you have? Well, Sam Hartman, you saw him limping earlier in the third quarter. He took a helmet to his right knee. He was bleeding pretty badly before they cleaned it up. But I'm just so impressed with how intense and focused he is, Andre. I mean, this is a guy that wants to be a professional quarterback. He's set on that dream. And if you look at his maturation over the last few years, the growth trajectory of Sam Hartman, Andre, I think has been fantastic. Yeah, the poise is what scouts are going to see first and foremost, and his ability to execute this offense. He can make the throws, so I, I, I have no reason to believe that he's not going to get a shot. Bottom of the round, incomplete. Hey, Clark, I as we sit here on the precipice of what looks like another 4-0 start for Wake Forest, I, I wanted to go back to your initial point that why this Wake Forest team is not going to have that that disastrous November where they're they're not great, they're good, but they're not great. Can can this be the team that can actually be great? 
I think so. I mean, in the past, they've started 3 0 before, but come Halloween, it's just, you know, things kind of tanked. This team's different for a few reasons. 20 out of 22 starters are back. They have nine super seniors, nine six year or more. Miles Fox is a seventh year senior on the defensive end. He likes his teams when they're old. Well, they're really old this year. They are experienced. They've seen everything. And to, to me, watching them on the sideline, the poise, their ability to understand the schemes, this team is going to be a handful in the ACC. It certainly appears that way. And Andre, yeah. you know, when we talk to Dave Kloss, Dave Kloss is not the kind of guy, for those that don't know, that's going to go on a conference call that we had and say, oh, yeah, this is my best team ever. Yeah. But when you put them under the microscope, there, there's a lot of reason to believe that this might very well be his best installment of Demon Deacon football. No, I agree with you 100%. I agree with Kark uh, 100%. I, I think this, this is his best team. And what we just talked about, you're going to have them all back. So there's experience for a while. He talked about, you know, getting old and staying that way. He's going to be that way for a while. And, and that's, that doesn't spill. That's not good news for the rest of the ACC. Oh, boy. A rare drop for Jelani Woods. He took a shot in the process. And, gentlemen, let's be honest, too. The ACC doesn't look like it has that one team like Clemson in the past that is going to absolutely blowtorch teams week in and week everybody out. Everybody so, looks vulnerable. Yeah, yeah, everybody looks vulnerable, and Wake is at its best. I mean, I've been watching Wake play for, for years. This team is dangerous. 37-17, Wake Forest impressive. Air Paul Carcaterra, Wake Forest up yeah. by 20. Looking for their fifth consecutive win over Virginia, something that's never been done. They're trying to improve the 4 0 on the season. Another big hit. I tell you what, no one's going to question Brennan Armstrong's toughness because he's taking a wallop tonight. I mean, they just keep getting home. Without dialing up the pressure, they've been able to figure out just how to get there. That's just manhandling some offensive linemen. That is six sacks. And that is Luigi Villain, the transfer from Michigan, with another one. Third down and 17. Armstrong with time, looking deep downfield, has all day. And will throw underneath four down territory, obviously, for Virginia the rest of the way as Wicks reels in another. Or Wicks now. That's his eighth reception. He's over 100 yards receiving on the night. He's slow to get up. Wicks looks like he's played a heck of a game, doesn't he? He has it. Got, got the tape hanging off of him, all kinds of well, you know, towel. I mean, for that matter, so is Brennan Armstrong. Yeah. I, I mean, Virginia's offense, I think, is going to be fine. The question is this defense. Zell Wingfield coming up. Transfer from Harvard. Was the first team all Ivy League his junior year. Grad transfer and decided to come down to Wake and continue his football career. This will be a rare loss for Virginia at home. Again, they've won 14 out of their last 15. Here at Scott Stadium in Charlottesville. Fourth down and six, Virginia will go. Seven minutes remaining in this one. Armstrong, lasers one complete, and that'll move the chains. Into the hands of Billy Kemp, who lost the football, stripped away, and Wake Forest has the recovery. And there's the takeaway. That's plus six in that category for Wake Forest. Talked about it at the top. They just figure out ways to get the football out. Kemp trying to get some additional yards after the catch and a big rake in there by Smenda. What a play. What a play by Smenda. 10 takeaways on the season through four games. 10. It's all that experience and how to play together. You see it there. It's the one lone year in 2018 where 
They go minus three in turnover margin, but that'll keep you. That'll get you to a lot of bowl games, Mike. Uh, again, it's the the formula is a pretty good one for Dave Lawson. Few mistakes, forced turnovers. You got a good ground attack, which has really eaten up Virginia defensively tonight. And then, of course, you've got one of the best quarterbacks in this league. It's so hard. There's a lot to like with this Wake Forest squad. Yeah, he protects the football, wins games between his ears, knows where to go, gets through his progressions, and he's got more than enough arm strength to uh, to make every throw. 470 total yards now for Wake. Wow. 200 on the ground, 270 through the air. Now just bleeding the clock down. They won't snap it until it's well under five seconds. Handoff, Hartman to Turner. Bottled up near the line of scrimmage. Nick Grant with a nice play. We'll turn it forward to Virginia here for a moment because again there's a lot to like about their offense. Yeah. How do they start to improve on defense will be a question for the Cavaliers. We know one thing the rush offense for Wake Forest awfully strong. Yeah the, the little mesh that they use to, to really slow things down where a back can pick his way led to a big run by Justice Ellison. And then he capped it off by getting himself into the end zone. Christian Turner, uh, Christian Beal Smith, both guys have had some an outstanding ball game. As you mentioned, over 200 yards rushing for Wake Forest tonight. They just took off a couple yards on the ledger with that loss, so down to 198 momentarily. But again, whenever they needed something on the ground, you just felt like they were going to get it. Like yeah. just more often than not. It wasn't the huge chunk plays rushing. It was five yards here, six yards there. Methodically moving down the field on several drives tonight. And if you're Virginia, you know, you came in, you got gashed last week against North Carolina. You say, well, you know, that's a pretty good offense as well. Now it happens back to back weeks. Now you start to get concerned about what you have moving forward. Yeah, you know, you're facing some pretty good quarterbacks. And Sam Howell, and then all of a sudden it's Sam Hartman this week. You have Miami coming up, and De'Ara King and Malik Cunningham. It doesn't get any easier on the schedule for for Virginia. It certainly doesn't. Great slate of games tomorrow on the ACC Network. It'll be number 15 Virginia Tech and Richmond on the ACC Network. New Hampshire Pittsburgh is on ACC Network Extra to start the day at noon. And then it's Kansas and Duke from Wallace Wade Stadium in Durham, capped off by our ACC Network primetime matchup presented by Geico. Georgia Tech playing host to the North Carolina Tar Heels. Of course, Georgia Tech gave Clemson a game last week to yeah. give the Yellow Jackets a shot there. Did not call for the fair catch and clearly paid for that decision. Yeah, you're right, he didn't call for it. Took a big shot in the process. Now it could be the final drive for Virginia on offense. They've racked up over 400 yards of total offense tonight. But a couple of times drive stalled inside the 10. Throw in a turnover. And here they are sitting on just 17 points. Armstrong unloads deep down the field. Did he pick it off? Great coverage by yeah. Wake Forest and another turnover. There's another takeaway. Great coverage on the play. And another interception for the Demon Deacons. And that's one that one of the few times we've seen Armstrong try to force a ball down the field. He forced this one into coverage. And looked like Kobe Davis with an interception, the safety coming over the top. And that's just playing center field. That's a gift. It's great concentration, isn't it? Yeah. Not sure who came up with it. 
Uh, it looked like I Kobe Davis. Davis did, yeah. yeah. First pick of the year for Kobe Davis, the junior out of the state of Maryland. It's a good looking secondary. And they run a 4 2 5. They play a lot of players back there. Yep. We've seen it all the way down to, down to Nick Anderson, Isaiah Wingfield. Carson's played, Holmes, Taylor, obviously. Making sure that he caught this cleanly and the ball did not hit the ground. I just don't see the football. It's between his legs, <laughs> and then he reels it in. So overturning that one would be tough. I don't know if I should say great hands or great legs, great thighs, if this holds yeah, up. sitting right between his legs yeah. at one point. Matt Austin, what do you see? Well, I agree with Andre. Uh, as long as he controls that ball before it touches the ground, it's not a catch when it's between his knees. He's got to secure it in his arms. And I just can't see when he did that. But I can't see it hit the ground either. So I don't see anything to overturn. You know, he's got his fingers crossed wanting that first one for the year. Already 10 takeaways on the season for Wake Forest. That came in second in the country in that department and trying to make it 11 if this holds up. Again, Bob Welch, our replay official, he's been busy tonight. Just don't see enough to, to overturn it. This is almost like a, a magic trick because I'm having a hard time figuring out. Oh, there you go. Right, yeah, right between the, the thighs. Right but, between his legs. But where does it end up? After that. After that. And you see it. He turns his body. Keep in mind, it was ruled an interception. You lose the football. You can't see it there. It has to the be. Call has to stand. Yeah, it has to be indisputable video evidence to overturn that. I'll tell you one thing: if it holds up, that is one heck of a pick. That is Sports Center top ten nominee type stuff from Kobe Davis. I don't have to wait longer. At the further review, the ruling on the field stands. First down, Wake Forest. There you go. Yeah, there was just nothing there to see yeah. the ball ever hitting the turf. Once it was ruled an interception, now you just got to find some clear and obvious stuff to overturn it. He just is just not there. Now Wake Forest can smell a 4-0 start, a 2-0 conference start, and a fifth consecutive win over the Cavaliers. Bleed some more clock, some more ground and pound as we say hello to Clark. You know, Andre, you were giving props to a lot of the Wake Forest defenders. I think this calls for Travion Red and the boys to go bowling. What do you think? <laughs> right? I think so. A man, can, he said he told us he, that he'd gone 290 one time. 290. He owns four of his own balls. Guy's all business. He's celebrating in the bowling alley. Two get back. 90, really? He said that uh, he missed a spare in the uh, in the opening frame, and then he. Everything else was was easy. Just he was on a mission that day. <laughs> he was in the zone. Yep. Wake Forest has been in the zone tonight. Both sides of the football. More straight ahead running on second down. Now we've talked about a number of times. Wake Forest has been here before, right? You get off to the good start, yeah. and then the schedule toughens up in November. You look at that quartet of games in the month of November at North Carolina, oh, NC State, at Clemson, at Boston College. That's going to separate good year, great year. Yeah, the next one against Louisville is going to be, that's going to be a tough football game for them because of the playmakers there. But I think it's manageable. Until you get to November 6th at North Carolina, North Carolina State, Clemson, Boston College, those four games, those teams are playing some pretty good football right now and just are going to get better. Blake, Blake locked down to one second. And 
once more and Justin Ellison just holding on to the ball. Yeah, you could say Clemson. Yeah, they, haven't, they don't look the same, but it's at Clemson. You know, if, if that was a home game, right, might might take a different approach to it, but that that's a tough place to go into and play. And then Boston College has been impressive here early in the season. Well, they have, and they've also got a fine quarterback. I mean, that's what, to, to go big picture on the ACC, that's to me what, is the separator from this year compared to some other years in the yeah. conference as a whole, not just one or two at the top, but you look top to bottom, the Driving quarterbacks force. in this yeah. league. Absolutely. I mean, it's as deep as any conference in America in terms of quarterback play overall. I agree totally with you. And we have seen two good ones tonight. That one will bounce inside the five and why not? Everything else has gone well. For Wake Forest. Oh, yeah, they're good at special teams, too. A 41 yard punt and no return. All right, so in the Atlantic, there you have Wake Forest about to improve to 2 0. You've got Clemson at 1 0 presently. The, the Coastal, which it's like seven straight years, seven different champions. Yep. The, technically speaking, Virginia is the defending Coastal champs because remember, we didn't have divisions last year. And so therefore, they won it last in 2019. You could almost give a, another a full game to Virginia Tech because they beat North Carolina in the opener That's head right. to head. So this, there's even more of a cushion there for Virginia Tech. Perfect pass. And caught by Malachi Fields for 13 of the first down. Uh, better days ahead for Brennan Armstrong in terms of team goals. I mean, he's thrown for 354 and two touchdowns. I, I know this is not going to go the way that he and Virginia had hoped for, but you and I getting it, our first chance to see him yeah. in person, he's just as impressive as I hoped he would be in terms of arm talent. Uh, he has got some tremendous arm talent. And the one thing that he he's going to need is a running game to go along with that arm talent it, it, because the passing offense at some point you're going to run into somebody that's going to drop back and, and the holes aren't going to be there that it's going to happen that day where you need something else to rely on and uh to be able to turn it around and give it to someone that you know is going to churn out 100 yard games or you're going to wind up that way at the uh, on the stat sheet at the end of a game that's what this offense needs you've got to find that from someone Armstrong has played well. Dontavian Wicks picking up where he left off. Still one of the top targets in the ACC. Jelani Woods at the tight end spot played well. They really, you know, we, I don't think we've mentioned this enough, but they really miss Tala Papa, the running just, back. I was just thinking it as, as you, you go through the depth chart, okay, who's that guy that could give it to him? Well, he's done it before, so that's where it would come from. And as, as we watch Armstrong running for his life again with a penalty flag on the play, what did the coaching staff tell us? He is by far and away their best run blocker. Yeah. And they could use more of that tonight. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, it, it's the, the help has got to come from the running offense, game. Offense, number 65, 10-yard penalty, first down. Well, what it does is it, it allows the offensive line to, to kind of engage itself, fire off at times in terms of run blocking. And it'll protect uh, Brennan Armstrong a little bit better as well when you start mixing in some play action. Right now it's just not respected because you absolutely can't run the football. 11 penalties tonight for Virginia to put salt in the wounds. Darrington has been one of the backups trying to pick up the slack for Talapapa. He's kind of resigned to get out of here now as the approach by Virginia. Get out of here without any injuries. Any seen injuries, it. that's exactly right. Enough guys get banged up already in this game. Final 90 seconds of the contest as Armstrong settles in the pocket. And again, another perfect strike caught by Keaton Thompson, the former Mississippi State Bulldog. This man, this one with a cast on, on that left hand. You never know it, but how he's just reeling in receptions. But I thought he would be a bigger part of the game plan, I think. Going forward, they've got to figure out a, a solution to getting him the ball a little more often. Young man who tore his rotator cuff, former quarterback, just can't put the zip on the ball that he used to before the injury. As Darrington picks up another first down as the clock now waning seconds under a minute to go. That's a huge compliment, though. 
and they create a position and it just says football player. Yeah, right. They can line him up wherever. Occasionally they can throw it. He can throw it. But uh, he is he's some kind of athlete. And they say they want their best athletes on the field, not just sitting on the bench yeah. and waiting for playing time. And certainly Keaton Thompson is one of their best. Armstrong. And that arm's going to get sore after this ball game. That's a drop. Intended for Thompson. Got to him a little bit late. That is 56 passes thrown tonight by Armstrong. Wow. He's a football player, passing yards, rush yards, and receiving yards. Attempt number 57 might be on the way from Armstrong. Nope, instead he's going to show off some of that foot speed and find another first down. With Valane chasing him. Been a good game for Luigi Valane. There's been so many good performances on that Wake Forest defense tonight. This will, if you just look at the box score tomorrow and you didn't yeah. say the game, you'd say, oh, well, I mean, Wake gave up a lot of yards. Uh, it was dominating fashion. Yeah. But Wake Forest, they actually hit the brakes a little bit. Because we know how fast this offense can go. And they 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 press the brakes a little bit in this one. On third down, that'll be a first down. Ronnie Walker might just do it. I, I don't know. If Brendan Armstrong wants to just run out the clock here. I think he's thinking, "Hey, I, I want another score." So Virginia is going to call a timeout with 23 seconds left, down 20. Marco Mendenhall's out, tapping guys on the on the helmet, to keep, a, keep the spirits up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Not sure if he's trying to get another score here before, uh, before the clock hits zeros. Gonna be a fun trip back to Winston-Salem for Dave Clawson and company. This is impressive. Really from start to finish Wake Forest and they're right around their season average for points. I think it was 39 coming in and it was an impressive performance as you mentioned. Yeah, I think a lot of people would be surprised to you know, know that stat we mentioned earlier the, the only other team to average 30 plus points a game over the last three seasons. it's Clemson and then it's Wake Armstrong completes it in the flat. And finally brought down is Mike Hollins. And they're going to race to the line to try to get another one off. This clock stops with the first down. On first and goal to the end zone. Jump ball. Knocked away. Fields had it. Jarred loose by Carson. Get at least one more play here. Oh, it's a little bit of pride kicking in for Wake Forest. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, they don't yeah. want to give up another. Yeah, they don't want to give up any more points. 17 sounds a lot better than 24. Here comes a blitz. And one second left. <laughs> We've got one more play, folks. That's hilarious. Hey, you know it's going to happen, right? You know they're going to put this one in the end zone. Uh -huh. Wake Forest is saying, no. No, we're not giving it to you. <laughs> here we go. The odds of getting a little blitz here. Wouldn't shock me. Nope, no play no. coverage. Armstrong with time. Everybody covered. Now a penalty flag. Armstrong is going to tuck it and run and fall down at the four. We'll That'll see what the it. flag is all about. That's going to be a hold, big time hold. Yeah, certainly in the area of holding. Holding, offense, number seven, penalties decline. That's the end of the game. And that'll do it. How about the Demon Deacons? 4-0 on the season, five consecutive wins against Virginia. Dave Clawson and company making some noise in the ACC. That'll do it for us. For Andre Ware, Paul Carcaterra, 
This is Mike Morgan saying so long. We'll send you to Vancouver. Canadian football, Saskatchewan against British Columbia. Good night from Charlottesville. It's all about leverage and low man wins on the defensive offensive line in those trenches. And the flavor and heat. Like me. And it's great on all the recipes I've mastered. I put that on everything. Turn your passion into a paycheck. Start your business and keep it running with LegalZoom. LegalZoom, let's make it official. The best things America makes are the things America makes out here. The history she writes in her clear blue skies, the legends she births on hometown fields, and the future she promises. When we made Grand Wagoneer, proudly assembled in America, we knew no object would ever rank with the best things in this country. But we believed we could make something worthy of their spirit. Football on TSN is proudly presented by The Brick, saving you more. And we like the pace in the first quarter of this football game, Glenn. Yeah, it, it felt like it had a little bit of a playoff feel to it the first couple of series, although we did see one drop from Lucky Whitehead. We know that Michael Riley will go right back to him. An 0 for 2 start for Riley, who's having a tremendous season. He's going to roll to his right, looking down the field has Burnham and that'll be completed midfield down inside the Riders 50 as he gets it in the hands of 16 in orange. Yeah a couple different layers there and Burnham was the middle layer so there was an underneath route there was Burnham and then there was an over top corner route. So if you're the Riders on defense you're trying to pick your poison there you take the deep one first eliminate that and Burnham was in between for 28 yards. Only had 32 yards on three catches last week, so a nice start here for Burnham. 28, a big play early in this game for Riley. Whitehead to his left, and that's where he's going to go. Lucky Whitehead with the speed. Whitehead stays on his feet. Whitehead down to the 30. Will they catch him? He's going to get to the 20, the 10, 5, touchdown! Lucky Whitehead to the house! Come on! Some flat out speed. Wow. He got the corner and took off. Bounces outside, he's got the corner now, and it's fifth gear and goodbye. They tried to catch him, but that's a little bit wow. harder said than done. As that kick is up, the extra point is good. Third touchdown of the year for that man. Lucky Whitehead exploding onto the scene with the BC Lions. A little bit of contact. Then he was home free. Today, let's paint with New Bear Dynasty so that you can be proud of your walls. Where is your furniture? Oh, we thought it distracted from the new Bear Dynasty paint color. Let me take your coats. Because Bear Dynasty only takes one coat. <laughs> <laughs> Bear yeah. Dynasty. Go ahead, throw your wine on it. What? Stain repellent. It's also scuff resistant. <laughs> We're paying for that. Introducing Bear Dynasty, the best of Bear, exclusively at the Home Depot. Attention foodies. With this fusion of prime rib steak, melted provolone, and other magical melty stuff, Arby's is now officially a fusion restaurant. Chef Smooch, Arby's, we have the meat. Dignity. 
demands that you can do simple things with ease while managing chronic pain. It demands a better understanding of your glucose levels so you can enjoy movie night and that your heart stays connected to your doctor so you know it's beating as it should. At Abbott, we fight for these moments, developing life-changing technologies because dignity demands it. That's a good taco. Dude, it's a sandwich. It's a sandwich! It's a taco! Ugh, not another taco guy. The new crispy chicken sandwich taco from Taco Bell. Whitehead. He had a drop on the first play of the game, but I think he made up for it with a 47-yard touchdown on this completion from Michael Riley. Leading receiver in the Canadian Football League coming into this game tonight, and 45% or almost half of his yards this year are after the catch. Man, did he show some speed down that sideline. Riley with a big chunk to Burnham, and then the rest to Lucky Whitehead. Two guys who are top four receivers coming in to this game and a nice return there from Jamal Morrow and he's fired up. Let's go back and watch the angles that the speed of Lucky Whitehead will outrun. He's going to catch this little hitch out here and then he does the rest on his own. Go ahead and run it guys. I want to show you the angles from the defenders at the end. I think Purifoy is one, Mike Tights the other. It starts right here. These guys have the angles. Look at this. They have the angle to cut him off. All three rider defenders and watch how Lucky Whitehead outruns the angle and beats him to the end zone. Wow, that's that's some flat out speed. He's pretty quick. Moore spins away from one man trying to get to the far side of the field. They're going to stop him on the far side after a nice return by Jamal Morrow. Shouldn't note there almost 40 yards. This is his best return of the year to give the Riders decent field position here. Yeah, that's what you you hope for with your special teams. They'll come back out, give you a little spark, and now Cody Fajardo just needs to convert, although they lost a couple on that first down play. Be second and long for the visitors. Midway through the opening quarter, a good start. Here at BC Place, pressure coming on, Fajardo gets it away, and it's incomplete. He was looking for Lenius, but he was taken down to the turf after he let that one fly. Anthony Thompson, the safety, was right there. Now, Marcus Sales started the season at safety, and they moved him to that linebacker spot. Here's the pit, and this is why the pass was rushed from Cody Fajardo. That pocket started to collapse around him. Jordan Williams, the linebacker, on a blitz. And in that back end, Anthony Thompson right next to the intended target. John Ryan to kick it away, waiting for it there, the always dangerous Lucky Whitehead. Whitehead this time, not a bad idea. Take him out at the feet. That's where they got him, on Yeko with the tackle. And this BC Lions offense with that guy, Lucky Whitehead, back on the field next. Oh, sister of mine, I got you this. The new iPhone 13 Pro? It's on Verizon 5G. I can't believe you got me this. Yes, Verizon is giving one to everyone when they trade in their older damaged phone. Oh, so like every sister can get this? Yeah. Every aluminum signing is dollar. Why not? Every doula. They would have to. Every customer, new and old, can get iPhone 13 Pro on us. Because everyone deserves better. Everyone, horse trainers, manicurists. You get the new iPhone. We're alone. I know. What are we doing? I don't know. Introducing Xfinity Rewards, our very own way of thanking you just for being with us. Enjoy rewards like movie night specials, Xfinity Mobile benefits, and exclusive experiences like the chance to win tickets to see Watch What Happens Live. Hey, it's me! The longer you've been with us, the more rewards you can get, like sharpening your cooking skills with a top chef. Join for free on the Xfinity app and watch all the rewards float in. Our thanks, your rewards. Plan on selling your home? Before you put up this sign, look for these signs. Water in your basement is a red flag to any potential buyer. In fact, you're required to disclose it, so don't wait. U.S. Waterproofing will fix your basement seepage issues so you can get top dollar. Schedule your free consultation today at uswaterproofing.com and enjoy no interest if paid in full in one year. U.S. Waterproofing, a better basement starts with us.
Bucky Whitehead now over 600 yards receiving on the season. He's a guy who can hurt you no matter where your offense is on the field. Well, those explosion plays and these only two BC Lions that have done it in one season, Emmanuel Arsenault, who many know of, Saskatchewan Rough Rider fans certainly do as well, but Lucky Whitehead, very different receivers. But those explosion plays, Whitehead now has six 30-plus plays this season. And those 275, and we're only halfway through the year. This time they'll hand it off to Cooper. There's a flag back at the 20 as Cooper takes it. Nice carry. Would have been 15 yards, but there is a flag on the play. And it looks like it'll be against the BC Lions. Holding BC, number 67. It's a 10 yard penalty. We'll replay first down. Hunter Stewart isn't sure. He doesn't agree. Hunter, Weird. Hunter, I totally thought he would. Yeah, Hunter, <laughs> Hunter does not agree with the call, but. Hunter Stewart, seventh year with the Lions. He's sixth overall pick back in 2013. Now it'll be first and 20 for Riley. Lacey bringing some pressure. They'll dump it off to Cooper. He's got a little bit of room here. Cooper takes it back out to the 25-yard line. Let's take a look at this Riders starting defense. Four-time All-American with Central Arkansas, Jonathan Woodard leads the team with six sacks and is tied for the league lead in that. Micah Tights is becoming a nice story. Leads the team and tackles with 30. And I mentioned Ed Ganey back in the lineup. We'll see if he, he does get matched up on Lucky Whitehead. But that means that Nick Marshall goes back to his familiar corner position on the short side. Second and 11 for Riley. Had some time. Looked like he wanted to go downfield, and then instead, it's an incompletion to Javon Katoy. Third and long. That'll bring out the kick team for the home side. Big game in the standings, as we mentioned. Big game between these two teams to move into second place alone behind the Winnipeg Blue Bombers in the West. And for the Lions, they haven't been able to beat the Riders in a long time. I mean, it's been seven straight. Go back to 2017 for the last time they beat them. Morrow waiting for this. A towering punt comes down at the 30, a 50-yarder. Morrow right back up the middle, and he'll take it out. Side his own 45, and Cody Fajardo trailing 7 to 3 here in the first quarter. He's perfect against British Columbia in his career. He'll try to get this offense on track when we return. This year, we rise. Rise with our fans and our teammates. Rise with the youth. Rise into the mountains. Rise with the sun. Because a rising tide lifts all boats. Rise up and grab it. Rise to the challenge. Rise up and celebrate. It's 2021. The CFL is back, and we will rise together. Since retirement, I've been trying a lot of new things. With Frank's Red Hot, it's the perfect blend of flavor and heat, like me. And it's great on all the recipes I've mastered. I put that on everything. Mm. Okay, okay, I'm up, I'm up. Five more minutes. Break me of a piece of that Kit Kat bar. It's orange shirt night here at BC Place. For more on that, let's send it down to Farhan Lalji. Guys, normally whenever the riders come to town, there is a lot of green here in the building. And yeah, there's a little smattering of that tonight, but a lot more orange. And one of the big reasons for that is these shirts. Every Child Matters, it's part of the Lions trying to bring awareness to na the National Day of Truth and Reconciliation, which is on September 30th. It's the first time it's going to be recognized as a statutory holiday here in Canada. Now, these shirts, which say Every Life, uh, Every Life Matters, was they were designed and inspired by a local Indigenous artist by the name of Green Hunt. She was also the co 
co-designer for the 2010 Olympic medal. She wanted to make sure that these shirts, this design showed a level of compassion, also that it showed the vibrancy of Indigenous history here in British Columbia. Back in May, when 215 unmarked graves were discovered from children outside of a residential school in Kamloops, outside of that site, the Lions wanted to get involved and help bring awareness to this cause, along with these shirts. They also invited 350 survivors of residential schools. There was also a $20,000 donation involved, and the club hopes that people will wear these shirts on September the 30th. Very important conversation, no yeah. doubt. Yeah, it is. Beautiful logo as well. As Farhan mentioned, to you know, create awareness to the history of the residential schools and try and, and understand, learn, find out what happened, and show that respect and compassion. A lot of it is just about being educated on the subject. We'll have a little bit more later on. Schaefer Baker with a big catch here for a first down in second and long for the Riders. Yeah, and it's and it's the only time that we've ever in the booth or on the sideline worn a logo of one of the two teams playing, but it's a special night and every life does matter, so we will honor that tonight. And boy, talk about a great story in the in the Saskatchewan Rough Rider lineup. That's that's Key and Schaefer Baker who just keeps making plays for this green and white. First to ten on the 43. Completion. But nowhere to go. That's Marcus Sales with the tackle on Kyron Moore. And talking about Schaefer Baker, what a week last week. Well, he earned the trust early from Cody Fajardo, and then the last two weeks he's been targeted more than than Kyron Moore. And that's saying something because when he's making plays like this, boy, Cody Fajardo wants to go back to him. And this was a great one where he broke a ton of tackles against the Argos, found the end zone, and then. That touchdown ball is first, gave it to his mom. How good is that? Second and nine for Fajardo here. Steps up in the pocket. Far side, he was looking to go to Schaefer Baker again. And this one incomplete. Gary Peters all over him. Real good close from Gary Peters. Mentioned Ryan Phillips, the defensive back court coach, although the, and, I mean that's how he's listed in the BC Lion website, but told us on a Zoom call this week that Gary Peters, TJ Lee, he's he's evaluated them all. He feels like they are the best. Now he's biased. <laughs> it's his guys, but they're the best at the boundary. 49 yard attempt from Lothar, and that is a good. He's two for two here in the first quarter. After just two for four last week, so a nice bounce back here. CFL on TSN keeps rolling Tuesday as week nine kicks off with a battle between the Elks and the Red Blacks. Don't miss the action, seven Eastern, four Pacific, only on TSN. Once again, that's some Tuesday action in the Canadian Football League. The NHL plays every night, we can play every night too. <laughs> It's not that far away. It's Friday, but I like to count things in sleeps. So it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Four sleeps away. I have two young I children. I was going to say, so, so, yeah. someone here yeah. has young kids. Yep. <laughs> Riley dumps it off. And nowhere to go once again. Tried to get it to Shaq Cooper. Micah Tights having a good season. And Dickinson told us earlier in the week, he said, just needed opportunity. And he's got it now, and he's making the most of it. Yeah, stepping in there and, and making the most of it. And he's had to shuffle his secondary a little bit. He gets Ed Ganey back, as I mentioned. So that moves Nick Marshall back to the corner. They'll work together. But Luchez Purifoy will now play safety for first Mike Edom. We've also had Christian Campbell move from the wide side corner now to the wide side halfback spot. A loss of a couple second and 12. Riley trying to lean back for it. Incomplete. <laughs> Keon Hatcher, he might have slipped a little bit as he went for it as well, and that will bring back out Flintoft. You know, behind him, and, and Ed Ganey again, the veteran, the veteran defensive back for Saskatchewan is closing on this, and, and that can sometimes persuade a quarterback to put the pressure on him to try and throw it to an open spot and hope his receiver can react. Didn't happen, and the BC Lions left the punt. Clintoff lets it fly from his own 22. That'll be taken just inside the 40. 
A 39-yard kick with a short return with just under a minute remaining here in the opening quarter of a tight ball game in Vancouver. Has not lost to the BC Lions, and that's a nice completion percentage. Touchdowns to interceptions, six and three. 16 of his career wins, four of them against BC. He'd probably like to play him a little bit more. One of the reasons that the Lions haven't beat Saskatchewan in seven straight back to when Travis Lulu was the starter for this team. You have to go that far back. Pajardo has some time. Now he's going to keep it. He likes to do this. He'll dive ahead to midfield. Ball pop loose, but it was after the whistle. And Fajardo, seven yards on that pickup. He had 58 yards on eight carries last week. Well, he thought about a little shovel pass there to William Powell. That's why the ball was loose and in his hand. But now by contact. Second and three. Last play of the opening quarter. We'll swing it out. A little bit of a bobble there from Lenius, and now he's in trouble. He loses yards after the catch. And that will bring up third down for the Riders. As both offenses able to move the ball a little bit so far in this game, but defense making some big plays as well. And it is the BC Lions who have won three in a row on a Friday night here at home, courtesy Lucky Whitehead and a 47-yard touchdown. They've got a one-point lead on the Riders. I'll give you 2.5 of my 10-piece chicken McNuggets for a quarter of your quarter pound of cheese. But judging by weight, mine's worth at least four chicken McNuggets. From a cost standpoint, they're of equal value. But I'm older, so. Get two of your faves like 10-piece McNuggets or a quarter pounder for just six bucks, only at McDonald's. Today, let's paint with New Bear Dynasty so that you can be proud of your walls. Where's your furniture? Oh, we thought it distracted from the new Bear Dynasty paint color. Let me take your coats. Because Bear Dynasty only takes one coat. <laughs> Bear Dynasty. Go ahead, throw your wine on it. What? Stain repellent. It's also scuff resistant. <laughs> We're for that. Introducing Bear Dynasty, the best of Bear, exclusively at the Home Depot. Yes, what I'm saying is people like options. I mean, you take Geico, you, you can call them anytime you feel like saving money, it don't matter, day or night. Use your computer, your smartphone, your tablet, whatever. The point is, you have options. Ah, oh, how convenient. Oi, crab cakes, what are you looking at? Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Wendy's new Big Bacon Cheddar is here. Because to make new flavors, you have to go above and beyond. Unlike some places. Wendy's put cheddar on the bun? What do we got? Sesame seeds. Yes! yes. Seeds! <laughs> yeah. Try Wendy's new Big Bacon Cheddar today. Well, welcome back to Vancouver, everyone. First quarter in the books, and it's a special night here at BC Place. Orange Shirt Night, and there's no better person to talk to about Orange Shirt than Philip Webstad, who joins us right now. Uh, the source, the origin of the story. Thank you very much for joining us. We really appreciate the time. Obviously, a big night for you seeing these shirts everywhere. Tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, how it all how it all came about. Yes, I uh, grew up with my grandmother, and. There's three generations of our family that attended residential school and when I turned six in 1973 my grandmother brought me to town and I chose a sh new shirt for my first day of school and I got to the mission and my shirt was taken away and that very quickly is the orange shirt story. Mm -hmm. Now as, as the conversation has continued to develop and you know if it's becoming a big day for this country started to just Orange Shirt Day. So tell us about the origin of Orange Shirt Day and your thoughts on how it has grown into what is now becoming you know, recognized nationally. From the very beginning, uh, Orange Shirt Day has been divinely guided. The ancestors are behind this and uh, recently the children. And I really believe that because there's no way that me humanly possible could do such a thing. And uh, 
it with the new, new National Day of Tr Truth and Reconciliation for September 30th. Yes. Uh, it's just uh, the doors are open, opening everywhere t for people to know the, the true history of Canada. That's really what it is, isn't it, Phyllis, about, first of all, educating the yes, general public. Yes, the awareness and, yeah. and uh, letting, letting them know that it's real. Let, let me ask you about the actual design of the logo. I know, Cor is it Corrine Hunt? Corrine, yes. Corrine Hunt who, who did it. And explain a little bit about the design of the logo on the T-shirts. I, Corrine would be better to <laughs> okay, explain that. Okay. Yeah. What we do it, know is that it looks terrific. It's terrific. It does look it terrific. It does create such great yes, awareness. First 10,000 people with the T-shirt, by the way, came in and got one. Yeah. And uh, they are available online on the BC Lions online store as well. At kickoff today, they went they went on sale. Uh, you know, talking a little bit earlier in, in the week with David Mackey, who plays for the BC Lions, and he said, you know, where we're at right now in this whole conversation, you know, as far as truth and reconciliation goes, we're in the truth stage right now. And is that what's really been happening over the last five or six months, especially? Yes, the truth uh, is not finished being told, and that needs to happen first. And uh, I'm thankful there's a lot of survivors that are still alive, uh, survivors here today. So, Bookstam, to all the survivors for being here and uh, to continue to tell your truths. And in 2014 in Williams Lake, the uh, BC Lions gave us these footballs and we gave them to the children. And ever since then, I've wanted survivors to be here. I'm gonna get emotional to be honored and to have people know about what happened to us and to know the history. It seems like since the news in Canloops, you know, because of media and social media, the conversation has really blown up, and, and obviously it's a very important conversation. Where, where do you continue to see it going? Where does it need to go for this discussion to head in the right direction? The uh, truths need to continue to be told. I'm holding this uh, stick today. The uh, search on the St. Joseph grounds where three generations of my family went started on August 30th, and the findings are yet to be revealed. And this is in memory of the children that it continues to uh, happen and it will for years to come. So the truth, it won't be done for maybe, maybe in my lifetime, maybe in my grandchildren's lifetime, I'm not sure. Well, Phyllis, thank you very much for joining us here today. Yes, thank you for absolutely. everything that you've done to continue to put the awareness of what happened at the residential schools in the eyes of all Canadians. And uh, thank you very much for the time today. Mm, good thank, you, Phyllis. thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Phyllis Webstad joining us, and uh, like I mentioned earlier, it was a limited run on the shirts as this ball is bobbled, but they are available on the BC Lions online store. The Lions leading 7-6 here early in the second quarter at BC Place. Boost and Cricket charge more for unlimited 5G. Metro does it. Introducing the big 5G upgrade. Just 25 bucks a month gets you unlimited 5G and a free 5G smartphone. That's half the price for one line of unlimited 5G smartphone data. Plus a free Samsung Galaxy 5G when you switch and trade in. All with the power of the T-Mobile 5G network. Rule your day with 5G. Only at Metro. I'm game day ready. Let's do this. <laughs> oh, you see that here? Oh my God. When your family gathers around a shakaroni from Papa John's, you're sharing more than extra cheese and pepperoni. You're sharing scholarships, meals, and laughter. Because one dollar from every shakaroni goes to charity. That's pizza with a purpose. Gosh it, did you know Geico could save you hundreds on car insurance and a whole lot more? So what are you waiting for? Hip-hop group tag team to help you plan dessert? Aw, uh, fresh vanilla, rocky road, chocolate, peanut butter, cookie dough. Scoop, that is, scoop, that is, scoop, that is, scoop, that is, scoop, shakalaka, 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 shaka, scoop, shakalaka, 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 Geico, switch today and see all the ways you could save. got a lead here right now but that doesn't mean you can't get a little fired up but well it has that kind of intensity this game and Brian Burnham I think he thought that there might have been a little bit of an aggressive play by Ed Ganey over the middle and a little extra there and 
he was hot when he went down to the sideline. I'm not necessarily, I don't think, directed at anybody, but just it's that kind of intensity tonight on both sidelines. Looked like Riley fired up there behind him as well. On the 21 is where the riders work. They'll go to Powell, and he'll push it ahead close to the 25-yard line. They're really getting Powell going here, and he's been so good the last little while. Three straight 1,000-yard seasons for William Powell. Yeah, third coming in and, and third right now, and those are up-to-date rushing totals for William Stanback in Montreal, who's the leader, James Wilder, Edmonton, and then William Powell. But as you mentioned, 100, game, 100 yards last week. Ricardo Lewis. Crossing the line of scrimmage, immediately grabbing his helmet. He knew he made a mistake there. Offside, Saskatchewan, number 82. Five-yard penalty, repeat second down. So instead of second and seven, they'll back it up. Called 82 and 86. He knew it, and he still knows it. Second and long, the situation. And now we get multiple whistles on the field. I think it's just a matter of time for Ricardo Lewis. If, you know, I, I know a couple of mistakes there, but. Timer, please put the clock back at 11.36, please. 11.36. It's a guy with a 38-inch vertical jump. Great athlete. Six foot two. Over 200 pounds, paid 50 games at Auburn and was drafted in the fourth round by the Cleveland Browns. He was drafted 54 picks ahead of Tyreek Hill that year in the NFL draft. I mean, this guy's got the resume to get it done. I think it's a matter of time. Second and 12, a completion for a first down outside the 35 as they get Get it into the hands of Mitchell Pickton for his first catch of the game. Yeah, that's that's slick catch, and, and the throw from Cody Fajardo helps Pickton to find that hole. It, it, it almost throws him open into the hole, and then turns up field. You see how precise that throw is, so he can protect himself, block out, and get, get a nice 17-yard gain. Stepped around Jordan Williams. First overall pick in 2020. Fajardo now on a keeper right up the middle. The very good push forward by Cody Fajardo. Got nine yards on the pickup. Now I asked Craig Dickinson in our Zoom call, as you know, Dustin, about about Ricardo Lewis and, and just is it is it the fact that he's not getting open, not running the right routes, those kind of things that he hasn't been used a ton, or is it that he is open and the ball just hasn't found him just yet? And he said the guy is running precise routes. Yeah. He's doing what we want him to do. He's getting the, the pluses in when he when we grade him. Second and short for Fajardo. Forward progress will have enough for the first down. But that's what he said. He said he's Lewis is in the lineup because he knows the playbook very well and he knows where exactly. he needs to be. Yeah. And and Cody Fajardo trusts to him to be where he needs to be. Now he was offside once, no big deal. But that's why I think you look at his background, you look at his college days, it's just a matter of time before he becomes a feature guy. First and 10 on their own 47, Fajardo. He's going to take a shot down the field looking for Linnaeus. He's got it. Linnaeus hangs on after a little bubble, takes it inside the 25. Great catch by Lenny is to maintain concentration. He's covered pretty well by Edwards Cooper. Gets the hand up there, and as he's going down, hangs on. A big play. And this is something that's kind of been haunting Cody Fajardo for a while. The big play down the field. Can he make that big play? The 50-50 ball. You know he's pumped up right now because it's starting to happen. 39-yard pickup. Lenius is actually the only receiver to have a play over 30 yards. He's got four of them now as they'll hand it off and they'll take it down to the 20. So Lenius has been his big play guy so far this season now with four 30 plus. Cody Fajardo just three 30 plus receptions coming into this game in six starts. And it was 
messing with him. He, he admitted that to us. He was bugging him. He said, I know what's going to happen. I just got to be patient with it. His, his receiver went and made a play for him. Second and six now for the Riders. On the edge of the red zone. Empty backfield for Fajardo. He'll dump it off over the oh, middle. Crazy. The receiver slipped. And it was almost picked off. Vine made a play on it. I think he was a little surprised it came in so cleanly. Well, Alexander Dupuis, I believe, was the one, the fullback who slipped and fell. And when your receiver falls down as a quarterback, nothing good can happen here. And you're right, it surprised Levine. He was dropping from his defensive line spot, and it hit him right between the nine and the six. Bowser two for two on the day. This one from just inside 30 on the left hash. And that is good. A perfect first half for Brett Lowther. He's been all of the offense for the Riders, but hey, they've got the lead 9 7 on the road in Vancouver. If it's true that time is money, don't you think the real question is how you should spend it? Keep the change, baby. Find the fine life. Two moms on a yacht. <laughs> we're, we're really in the backyard in a blow-up pool. Like, <laughs> isn't this the life? It is. You can yeah. pretend. I pretend all day. <laughs> Sonic uncork slushes. I could totally see myself drinking this on a boat. Oh, yeah. When we... That was fun. Alexa, play our dance playlist. World-class care at Derrick Dermatology starts with a dialogue, a conversation with your own dedicated medical team who's right there with you for your entire visit, ready to answer all of your questions. Top-rated experts who talk with you, not at you. You'll discover we accept the most important insurance plan of all, yours. That's the difference between everyday care and world-class care. Derrick Dermatology, world-class dermatology, close to home. MLS on TSN continues tomorrow from right here in Vancouver as the Caps take on FC Dallas. Coverage gets underway at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific on TSN. Getting coached up there, the defense from Ryan Phillips, former BC Lion, 47 career picks for Coach Phillips. Riley starting on his own 35, four receivers to his right. He'll tuck it into the belly of the running back and really nowhere to go on the carry there for James Butler. Just noticed that Lucky Whitehead was down in the, in the boundary here against Nick Marshall. And if that's a matchup, that's, that's a great lockdown cover corner in Nick Marshall, also from Auburn, in fact, was a quarterback at Auburn, when Ricardo Lewis was a receiver at Auburn, but he he got matched up on that last play with Lucky Whitehead. He's going to be out there on Katoy this time. They're moving Lucky Whitehead around. Whitehead out to the wide side of the field. Riley looks that way. Riley pressure. Flags fly as he escapes. Now he's going to take it out to the 40. Tracked down from behind at the 45. But we got flags at both ends of this play, and they'll have to sort it out. I was going to say, it looked like Michael Riley went down, got tackled from behind. It was a clean tackle. Now he's a runner. There are two fouls on the play. Holding BC, number 51. Legal contact, Saskatchewan, number three. We'll replay second down. So we'll do it all over again. They almost got to him. Well, they, they mentioned the center. There's the tackle. It was on Mac Henry from Peter Godber. Now the, as I mentioned, Nick Marshall down at the bottom. Illegal contact. You can make contact after five. Oh, 
Maybe possibly the official got the number wrong. I didn't see there's legal nothing con there, right? Legal contact yeah. there, but it's Dion Lacey got looked at on the field at the end of that play. He's up and walking off right now. But Michael Riley at the end of that run got tackled from behind went down hard on his knees. He was a little bit slow to get up there. It'll be second and 11 as we do it all over again. Here's to be OK. Said the elbows getting better every week. One for five on second down this evening. Pump fake. Now he's going to send one down the field looking for Whitehead again. And this one in double coverage is batted away. Marshall working with Whitehead and Ganey came over to help him out. Yeah, it was it was basically his own look and, and Ganey was deep over the top. But Nick Marshall again, these two playing in the boundary. Marshall is going to make it look like man. Ganey's going to drop back into this deep outside area and then he breaks on the football. But Marshall's the guy who makes it look like man and then takes off. Fifth punt of the game for Flintoft will bounce inside the 20. 58 yard kick picked up by Morrow and it knocked out of bounds immediately. BC Lions at home trailing the Riders trying to go deep to Whitehead, but Saskatchewan would have none of it. This year, we rise. Rise with our fans and our teammates. Rise with the youth, rise into the mountains, rise with the sun, because a rising tide lifts all boats. Rise up and grab it, rise to the challenge, rise up and celebrate. It's 2021, the CFL is back, and we will rise together. I'm game day ready, let's do this. Don't forget the chips. Nice pass. <laughs> <laughs>